indeedy do it is our turn. Has been for a long time. Welcome to Outside the Box Open Forum tonight. Host Kate of Guy here with uh, fellow host Tony Z. Uh, Tony, we have you on the board, yeah. Yep, up and running. There you is. All right. Yeah, so we're just going to kind of go wide open tonight and uh, see where we go. I do have uh, that little essay I was uh, promising people I would share. So I think uh, maybe I can set a tone with that and we'll go from there. What do you think? Does that work for you? Absolutely. Go for it. Okay. All right. So let's just get on to it and... (sighs) Let mankind know what's really going on here. Uh, I do have the document open. It's just a matter of moving a bunch of things around because uh, it's just the way it is here. <clears throat> All right. Um, and I guess you've got your eyes on the chat room. Uh, Tony, yes? I'm working on it, yeah. I'm juggling okay. Windows trying to get it sorted. Yeah. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> Isn't it fun? Live radio is always fun because it's not just a matter of sitting down and shooting the breeze. Uh, great show last night, by the way, uh, with some beautiful information released uh, by uh, Seven and, of course, Tony Farrell. Uh, for those that um, haven't seen the Farrell report, uh, head on over to synchronicity.com. That's S-Y-N-C-R-E-N-I-C-I-T-Y.com and uh, grab a copy of that. And please make it viral. Uh, one of the things that and it ties in a bit tonight as well. I'm going to be going over a lot of older concepts to try to, as I said earlier, nail this coffin lid shut. I'm getting a little tired of pulling the nails out to hammer them back in every other show. So I'm going to see if I can finally get the message across. And um, the message is this. Everything that is, you think has gone wrong and everything fault. And we need to get that mirror up and running. And there's Run. no, yeah, there's no clinging to any illusions here, guys. And I've had too many people talk to me about, uh, you know, this situation or that situation. And again, I go back to the same bullshit all the time. Guys, you don't understand what you're doing until you know what you're actually doing, and until you can actually confront that which it is that you are actually doing. And mankind is of free will, consent, and choice, committing fraud on a grand scale, keeping the dark principalities in honor. So thank you very much for doing that. Uh, I would rather that you didn't. So here we go. And uh, always remember that when I do write something, I'm looking in my mirror. And I'm looking in everyone else's mirror because I am one of the everyone. This is how I look. Uh, has a copy of this, please feel free to crack it open and read along with me. It's no bouncing ball, though, so uh, uh, work it out for yourself. So here it is. Who are you? An open letter to humanity. This letter shall be your mirror as it is mine, to gaze into with delight or be repelled and disgusted as per your own internal judgments, for no one else can be that for you or for me. Are you enlightened spiritually or encased in a material tomb of your own making? By the end of this, only you will know, so the pleading of ignorance will be as an ember cast off into the wind from your own fires within. I to convince you of things you are and of things you are not, but your heart will correct you otherwise every time. There is no escape from that. As you, the reader, or in this case, the listener, Walk through your daily life asleep or awake. You will come into contact with me, for I am everywhere and everyone, because I am human. I, the everyone, has much in common with you. I breathe. I feel pain. I bleed when I am cut. I cry when I am hurt. I laugh when I am joyful, and most of all, I love. My love, however, is unconditional. It knows no borders, no races, no religions, no governments, no barriers whatsoever. You see, when love is what love is, there is nothing that can stop it, and certainly nothing that can conquer it. The only changing factor in that truth is you, and what you believe to be true and real, and what you know to be true and real, based on the terms and conditions you place on conditional love versus unconditional Are you the one that fell in love with someone, but because of your upbringing programs of societal conditions, 
forbade you your own heart? Was your program one of division from humanity based on religion, gender, politics, or bias, etc., based on the families you were born into? Have you dared to actually ever stand in your own heart and purposes to reach beyond that little box you were thrust into at birth? By observation only, it is easy to see our inhumanity in our day-to-day lives being played out and all of it based on concepts and stigmas that were created for you and not by you. As I look around me into the everyone of humanity, time and time again I see the same destructive forces being played out by those in ignorance of who they are. All too often, the being of you is defined by the job you have, the uniform you wear, and the imprints placed upon you by those closest to you since birth. Typically, Many become the vicarious apparitions of their parents and remain humanly dead for a lifetime, and who knows for how many other lifetimes they've been caught in the same programs over and over. They're easy to spot. They are the ones that like to feign authority over their fellow humans via many means and methods. These are the ones that like to inflict harm on their fellow humanity. And usually at the back and call of another they have given their own authority away to. This is the master-slave paradigm program. You will see them in courtrooms called judges and lawyers. You will see them in banks, governments, churches, precincts, armies, and everywhere uniforms are involved. Uniform means one form, so suits and ties, clerical vestments and robes, and all manner of outward apparel makes them uniformed and slaves to one master or another. They are the ones that measure their strength and how much control they can exert over others by deceptive and oft-times violent means. These humans, if they can be called that, are more enslaved than the rest of the everyone. They will knowingly and unknowingly inflict harm upon others in humanity and puff up their own chests with pride after having done so, and I'm sure you recognize your mirror already. Yes, you, the closet deviant who practices many of the dark arts. You are the ones with child porn on your computer. Some of you are the rapists of children and the traffickers of your fellow man, be it by means of handing out a traffic ticket or being involved in a child sex ring. You're all the same to me, since willing harm on anyone is willing harm on everyone, but mostly upon yourself. You see, I cannot judge you, nor would I, because that is what you're doing right now. You are standing in the shadow of yourself, where only you can give it light. I know your dirty little secrets, and they just came into view for you to see. You are the writers of falsehoods in the media, the newspapers and magazines. You are the purveyors of fear and deception, and have your thirty pieces of silver every week proving that Judas is within. You are the salesmen of liars, murderers and thieves, propagating the wishes of your masters, and masters you indeed have, and your paycheck is your proof. You have become the damned and the damnable of your own doing, and your own free will choosing, where ignorance is not your defense. Your own heart, if you have one, will ferret it out for you, where all I have to do is but mention it. You know you are the rapist, the thief, the pedophile, the murderer, and facilitators of war and harm. There is but one law that proves your free will choice, and the ignorance card cannot be played here, because that self-same card awaits you upon its inevitable return, so that you may experience everything you have ever done to harm another. It's a simple rule, but yields the powers of the universe and its creator. Such is natural law. Many a saying or anecdote has been used to describe it, but suffice it to say it in its original form, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Unfortunately, the mostly ignorant fail to see the mirror in this one, and time and again they get to suffer the inevitable swing back of the pendulum, be it in this life or the next. Have no doubts. Those that inflict evil in any and all of its forms can never escape this truth by simply thinking that they will die and be done with it. No, that's not how it works. And depending on the intent of those that you harmed, that which inevitably comes round will come round faster than you may expect now. It's quite simple, really. If you wished harm upon me, then it is because it is you that wishes to experience that mirror. In your actions, from spiritual precedent intent, you've already judged yourselves, as I have done the same for me. Every ticket you write, every false article you air, every home you steal, every child you rape, etc., ad nauseum, 
is coming to a being real soon, and that being is you. Alas, you sit and gloat at your fortune stolen from others, your hedge fund brilliance in creating false algorithms to perpetuate the frauds until that math invariably fails too. These are the houses you have built on the sand, the false idols you worship, and the whore of Babylon called commerce you greedily perform cunnilingus on after the millions have bettered her before you. You do not know who you are, because you are a false entity, an id entity, created by another, and has you enslaved by virtue of your own willing blindness. You, who claim to be humanity's best, based on your illusional position of feigned power, gloat in the creation of your own hells. You are the murderers of children because somehow you think your children are superior and create the same vicious circle that has plagued humanity for countless eons. You measure value in material things, titles, and all manner of lower-mind ego-driven lusts that will keep you enslaved until you can face yourself in humanity's mirror. As the saying goes, if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out, which is to mean metaphorically that if you see something within yourself that is offensive, stop doing it. Only in the realization of this fact can you repent at all. This goes far beyond the literal translations of the spiritual tomes that are being used to great effect to keep humanity warring due to its God of War teachings and fanatical followers. If your gain comes at the expense of others, be it financial or lives lost, you are guilty by association. If you work for or manufacture weapons, ammunition, and similar tools of murder, you are guilty. If you work for any corporations that promotes war, you are as guilty as the jarhead that pulls the trigger or launches the missiles. If you are a pilot and work to chem spray, geoengineer the planet, you are guilty of genocide by the act and pro to you, the best and the brightest that are bought off by the think tanks, you are nothing more than a sellout of humanity for the same 30 pieces of silver. This list is almost endless for the entanglement of humanity in its own destruction, and all you can say is, I'm just doing my job, and I have a family to feed, inasmuch as somehow your life is superior to another's? You are delusional, and your masters have you duped and have used your ignorance and greed to accomplish that. Corporatism is merely the new and improved branding of serfdom and slavery. You know who you are, and what you have sold you, your humanity and soul for, yet you haven't got the foggiest clue as to why. Alas, you will preach truth and honor from your fictitious pulpits, and then rape a child. Bed your neighbor's wife or husband. You all travel to your respective churches and think you have somehow been absolved by confessions of your sins. I assure you, confessions of your deviant acts are only the beginning of your spiritual walk, and you're not even standing yet. You will run and hide behind others like you for protection, and all the while be protecting the very monster monsters that own you and your soul. They're the ones laughing at how deeply you have been tricked into subservience, while getting little pats on the head and some table scraps for treats. Sadly, you drool for these pittances in as much as you lust to go out day after day and fulfill your quotas for your slightly higher master. You will partake in stealing people's homes, without the slightest clue as to why, and only because some lawyer or judge says you should. You will use and have used violence against the peaceful to satiate your bloodlust, but that is normal for an animal still locked into the predator-prey paradigm, and you will claim to be evolved. Evolved into what? Certainly not anything resembling a human, because humans don't feed on each other. That is cannibalism. Humans don't rape children, murder children, and destroy their lives. Human en humans enhance the lives of all around them, because they are evolved. Woe to ye lawyers indeed, for you have corrupted the true laws of this universe for gain and profit at the expense of others. This includes priests, rabbis, imams, government officials, banking so-called elites or no-lights, lawyers, police, judges, weapons manufacturers, and all manner of useful idiots that claim to have authority over another. For those that have a Bible upbringing, time to shed a little truth as to why some guy really got crucified. He decided to go up against the bank bankers and moneylenders in the temple. The only time he ever set foot in one. And then what happened? 
Shortly after exposing the banksters for what they really are, thieves and parasitical vampires, he found himself on trial by the same own judge, where it was put to public jury, and he was crucified while a known criminal and murderer was set free. Yes, that is exactly what you're doing now. I find it sickeningly humorous that many of you are doing the same crimes millennia later, and you're still too dumb to see it. You have traded in what is true and right for profits and profits. You will pass your little dictates like they matter somehow. You will harm people for your gain because your job and subsequent master say so, and in that you feel justified. As stated previously, the clock is ticking, and the pendulum is here for the old what-goes-round-comes-round festival of lights. Unfortunately for you, the golden rule is beyond fact. For those that have committed harm against me, I grant them their wish to experience that which they wished upon me in the fullest sense and loving compassion, that maybe this time they will learn and they will see the mistakes for what they are. I dared to turn over the tables of your masters, and you served them willingly with the glee that a dog experiences as it licks its genitals. You have chosen the acts of an animal, and will therefore have judged yourself accordingly. To thine own self be true fits nicely there as well. You chose excuses written by another and have bought your own damnation in your actions. After all, it is all about intent at the end of the day, right? Isn't that what your damnable courts are all about? Intent? Alas, it is never fully explained as to what intent is really all about. It's quite simple, in that the intention to do something always precedes the actions of the everyone in that light, courts are completely unnecessary because we must judge ourselves in our actions after the fact by the very intention that has been revealed in the action. The innocence or guilt is already prima facie evidenced by your actions, be they in ignorance of the natural law or willful knowledge of the same. No one escapes the truth. No one. If you are a worker in the places that creates anything harmful to humans, you are guilty by the act of working there, of and by your free will choice, and agreed upon intention. No exceptions. If you buy the creations of these same creators of harm, be it junk food, vaccines, weapons, slaughterhouses, etc., you are as guilty as the one who creates it for debt note scraps from the whore of Babylon herself. There is no excuse for harm where it is exposed, and all are guilty by omission or commission of the crime. Is the getaway car driver any less culpable of a robbery or murder because they weren't part of the physical act being undertaken? By agreements, we are all held accountable to our actions by the fact that the intent was there and the consent was given. If you carry the mark of the beast, which is, in fact, the very name you think is yours, you are of the walking dead and one of the zombies being referred to so much on mainstream media and programs. Unfortunately... Most of you are too busy being entertained to notice these things being laid bare before your very shut eyes. The fools and zombies are easy to spot as well, and you'll likely get a sense of the mirror with the next few comments. They are the ones that scoff at anything that wasn't regurgitated from the TV set, the newspapers, and any other means of government propaganda that is owned by their masters. They are the sports stats experts, the ones who can recite the latest headline dramas to perfection, they are the watchers of media shows and talk show puppets, and they will defend others' ideas with a ferocity that would make one think that they were their original thoughts. They are the ones that race to pick up the latest alcoholic poison, their bags of processed poison chips and dip, and are usually the first to bitch about some government official they foolishly voted for thinking, somehow, that the current thief or child rapist in power is going to do something different. They are the ones that head to their meetings in the morning to get the latest directives from their masters, be they precinct captains or corporate manager. They are all the same regardless. They are the slaves to the mini-master, who is slave to another master, and on and on it goes, up to the real master that is pulling all the puppet strings. To see who you really are, you may want to watch Pinocchio again, or if you are able to read and write above a kindergarten level, pick up the book. Based on the signatures I've seen over the years, there are many that barely have the ability at all. Much can be shown in your handwriting skills or lack thereof. Are you beginning to see the mirrors yet? Are you beginning to start measuring yourself, or is the urge to get that, <coughs> sorry, get the latest porn mag 
or video overwhelming you right now. I know who you are, and you do too. It's never easy looking in such a vile reflection, now is it? While that may be difficult, what is coming for you in correcting it makes the reflection pale in comparison. Think of all the times you have harmed another and knew it. To that pendulum that is now swinging back and picking up momentum. And while there isn't a way to stop it, there is a way to lessen its blow. But I don't think you have the heart or the savvy to do that. Call me a realist. Do you honestly believe you can handle having your family torn to shreds to have everything you've ever known stolen and all the while be defamed for daring to bring truths into the light where your evil has been so prevalent? Will you be able to stand the incredible tests that are coming your way that will tear you asunder and then be able to look at those that did it and say I love you unconditionally? Again, I'm being a realist and will answer for you. Not bloody likely. But experience this you will, this lifetime or the next as you move back down a few degrees on the creation scale, only to have to work your way back up, since your ability to be human is far from expectations. Real or otherwise, that is the realm of vampires, and the sun is on the horizon, and you're caught out in the middle of a desert with nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. Yes, you will feel the searing and burning of the truth as it vanquishes all the blackness and scabs of evil that you have so greedily collected in the actions of your intentions that already have you judged. Alas, and how can I forgive you or anyone since in that action I have judged you? Where there is no need, so all I can offer is a simple, so be it. Your choice, and I will not violate the golden rule any longer. It is not that I wish any harm upon anyone, for that is madness in the mirror of creation of cause and effect. It is also not that I can wish for things to be different for you, because, again, I cannot. You made your wish, and I made mine, and the bed we all make is one that we will inevitably have to sleep in. The mirror is yours, for you are the traitors of humanity, the rapers of children, the murderers of the masses, the willing creators of genocide, the psychopathic mutilators and purveyors of false religions and worshippers of false idols. You have the mark of the beast and you gobble greedily at corporate cock, and all the while the whore of Babylon coos at your willingness to do so. No, I'm afraid you don't know who you are, because that requires awareness of others beyond yourself serving gluttony and your covenants with dark principalities that most of you aren't even aware of either. So dumbed down you are to such a degree you can't even see help when it arrives, and where it only wished to set you free. You have been duped into giving up your soul, and I honestly wonder, how many lifetimes and body deaths is it going to take before you even begin to awaken? The recent mass die-offs of animals around our beautiful planet are making room for the new arrivals that have failed humanity school, and guess who the new students are? Indeed, the circle and cycles of life are cruel, if not at least fitting. Indeed, how many pearls of wisdom have been cast before you, and still you are less than swine. Yes, I feel for you, and all I feel is pity and remorse that I could not, not do more to awaken you to your heart and your humanity. There is an old saying that one should never turn anyone away from your door, because it may be an angel knocking. The day has come, and the angels will knock no more, for time is up. May you have mercy on your own soul, now, while you can, because the truth is, you're the only one that can. With unconditional love and the power to grant your wishes willingly. Kate of Gaia. Mm. That I mean it. <laughs> That's the thing. I mean it. Um, you know, these are, these are the things that I ponder all day, every day. And... You know, it, 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 I haven't even got words for it anymore. It, it, it gets to be so dumbfounding and so, like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing going on all the time. Anyway, um, yeah, some feedback, Tony. What do you think? Well, um, the people you were addressing it to, I think they shot out of here like lightning speed, but... <laughs> In other words, those that are guilty, you know what I'm saying? The ones that have really got to try and look inside. Look inside. I mean, um, yeah, I don't think they could uh, handle that. 
But, but I can, t- I can tell if, us who the if, humans are. If they did, fair play to them. If they can mm-hmm. actually look inside themselves and see it, it's like, well, that's going to take some strength in it. Well, that's it. And I, and I will share this with everyone listening and everyone that read this and will read it. Uh, those that have actually questioned themselves during the process of it are the ones that I'm speaking to. They're the one, uh, the hearts. That's the ones that can resonate things within themselves. Because the truest way to figure out if you're insane or not is this. If you ever have to ask yourself, am I insane? <laughs> Chances are you are. It's the ones that are walking around pompously with, you know, peacock feathers raised and fluffed out chests. They say, oh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not doing anything wrong, you know. And generally, you'll you'll see them in uh, in uniform because uh, that's the kind of jarhead that they want, um, typically. And this game for them is uh, unfortunately it's over, and uh, we we've moved into a, a new paradigm, a new place to be, and uh, so be it. And the ones that ran are the ones that heard but will never confront. And that's okay, too. The whole idea of this is to bring the everyone together. I mean, it works for me. I'm just saying. Absolutely. It's the uh, people of sound mind and heart that we need. Um, you know, join into that etheric bubble and push this baby out there. And uh, change, the, change the vibration for good. Sorry about that. The computer froze when I was trying to unmute. Lovely, eh? Isn't that great? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just got a message here from Swan. Um, yeah, I'd love to... Uh, well, actually, here, Swan, I'm on the air. <laughs> I am on the air. <laughs> Want to join? There we go. See? Multitasking. I can walk and chew gum, even. You should see it. It's really cool. <laughs> and then heels, no less. <laughs> So there you go. Um, oh, ping me when you're free. Uh, okay, uh, I guess we're not going to bring it around just yet. But again, guys, this is a uh, this this is. I'd love to get your feedback on this because we are the everyone. And I've got a couple of callers in right now. Uh, one I know. Uh, hello, Jim. I'll, I'll I'll meet you in a sec here. Uh, but I I do want to make this something that everyone is part of. You know, I mean, you know me, Tony. I'll I'll bring stuff to the table and that that, quite frankly, pisses a lot of people off. Uh, you know, it's like, how dare you? Uh, but that that's the thing is, is the problem with being empathic is, is the energy that I get to experience is that which is being given to me, and what I become around people. This is one of the reasons why it's probably better just to leave me alone. Uh, I become empath that as the empathic mirror. And I just push right back exactly what's being fed at me, and any any of the the rage and anger that I feel inside is 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 that ah, I can't even put a word to it uh, that I'm feeling from others. And I guess uh, for me, it, it's taking the, this kind of energy and trying to transmute it. And and when we come on these shows and and you know just talk in general, that's where I get to you know put it back out, you know, hopefully uh, in a changed form. But I got to tell you, there are many days, there are so many days um, that that is next to impossible to get all of it done. Uh, but I, I do get it done eventually. That's when I go in. If you don't hear from me for a number of hours on the net or whatever, that's what I'm doing. I'm zoning and just purging all that energy. So there you go. I'm going to open up uh, uh, Jim's line here. And I uh, do have another caller calling in on the general line. So uh, for those listening, uh, the number's on the screen there for you, but here it is, 661-467-2401. And, of course, you can Skype in. And I do believe if you have uh, Gmail, you can use your computer to call in that number as well, which is 661-467-2401. Oh, okay, yeah, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull Swan in here for a sec. Uh, say I know she got a copy of it, and uh, I know she's only got a few minutes, so let's bring her in. Uh, Swan, are you there? I'm there. Good morning, Kate. Beautiful <laughs> Kate. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. I'm resurrected. Excellent, excellent. I, I don't know if you've been tuned in or not, but I just went through the through the essay I, I uh, sent you earlier. 
I don't know if you had a chance to read it or not, but I just uh, I just read that out on the air for everyone. Um, the the touch the love, of the witch. The love, funny, the love and me. Yeah, that uh, the open letter to humanity. That one. Oh no, I read that. I didn't the second one. I read the humanity is amazing. It just true. Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. I only caught a bit of that. I said, said humanity very amazing is is it just smacks of truth. It hits you your heart and in the eye and so and you have to go, yes. Yeah. Oh. Now again you're I I'm only catching a little bit, but I, I, I got that you uh that you have read it and uh, yeah, it uh it, See that's that's one of the things, especially when writing, uh, you get time. It's meditation for me. It, it, you get time to spend time within, and you start looking around inside your within to see the reflections of the without, and the things that we experience. And you try to bring that all into focus to see how we fit into that equation and what our responsibility is. And that's the for me that's the big card that people can't play. Is uh, you know in every situation they can be all pissed off about this or the other. But never once look in their own mirror. Um, you know, you, you went and had a dance with someone and somehow, you know, so I just I'd, I'd just like to bring that back onto the table. Agreed. As you say. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's it's getting a bit better. It's uh, it's kind of sketchy. It's it's cutting in and out. Uh, little little pops of popcorn on occasion, but we're good. Oh, there's been plenty of popcorn around. Abundance of that. Yeah, uh, actually, while I've got you, how are things going with the book? Everything uh, ready to roll? Very exciting. It's up on Amazon, as from yesterday. And ready to rock and roll with the major launch, a major global launch on Tuesday. Well, I was going to say, count me in on uh, on getting the word out, so... Uh, well, and well, you're doing it right now as well. But uh, definitely, um, whatever links and stuff that you can share with me, I will get them onto Facebook and through Skype, and we can get people to get it viral for you as well. Beautiful, thank you. In fact, that was why I was pinging you this morning because I wanted to talk to you about you getting your own ebook out at the same time. Yeah, you know, Tony has been actually all over me about that as well. It's a matter of getting the time to sit down and put what uh, you know what I would deem to be an ebook together. And uh, who knows, right? <laughs> well, after this call, we need to discuss it because I'm getting messages all night. They haven't let me sleep. They've just been messaging me to get this in, get this message through to you that it's time, and it can be done really fast. Okay. Well, um, yeah, it's not like I have a shortage of material to put together. I've got uh, I, I got a lot of editing to do, but at the same time. Um, yeah, I'm sure I could put something together. Take me. I've, you know, you know how many books I've started. Uh, I've only really finished one, uh, and that was. And I, I it's like probably six, seven chapters in. I don't know, seventy, eighty thousand words, and uh, you know, at that point, I'm looking at it, and it was already, as far as I was concerned, obsolete with the information over that week. So, <laughs> I just said enough of that. So, I think I just have to get into something a bit more general uh, in terms of. Um, well, actually, I do have one message that most people still aren't getting, so I could write a book on that. Absolutely. Well, you know, the letters to humanity, if you've got any more pieces like that, can put them all together in a compilation of messages for humanity, and I have someone who can put the ebook together for you in one day. Oh, well, that's kind of interesting, because I have... You have no idea how many episodes I've got. <laughs> that's uh, right, and he's an expert in Amazon. He'd get it up there. We could bring you into the global campaign that I've got going out next to 600,000 people. Oh, because the world, the world needs to hear it. Exactly, and and something else too. I might as well bring it up. Tony has a book ready to go. Uh, I know he gives it away, uh, but I I don't see any issue with it um, going that route as well. You know. No, nor do I. I was going to talk to him about the same thing after I spoke to you. So, is he online with us today? Yep, Tony, go ahead, jump in. 
Hi, Mary. Good to hear from you again. Yeah, good to hear you, Tony. Yeah. How brilliant. are you? Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. So the launch has gone well then, yeah? Oh, it's been a roller coaster of challenges, obstruction, and interference. But something broke through yesterday with the beautiful Kate's help, and I had a massive shift last night. And it's already it's up on Amazon, so I've survived and succeeded and achieved the maculous. Yeah, the well, shield yeah. up game. <laughs> That one's so easy. I uh, um, I get this beautiful visual when it, uh, any anytime stuff like this comes up, I get this beautiful planetary visual of being at my point where I am and just sending this incredible engulfing blue light right around the planet to pinpoint the area where someone is and it always finds them. <laughs> it's just like and it engulfs people in it. Well, I was totally in it until I sat down with the Nexus radio interviewer and he started asking me about the book, and suddenly it all started to shift. And then um, big insights last night about the planetary karma that has been cleared, that I've been clearing, and that we've all been clearing, and that still needs to be cleared. And that's why we need to get on messages now, because by have important information, getting that out into the planet will shift a huge amount of karma, especially if we all go out together. Yeah, that's the thing. There's the mirror, guys, and, and we have the power to do it. This is It's always been within you, always it has been within you. Can you be willing to look at your mirror and go, I screwed up? <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of the, all of the crap that I'm involved in, all of it, not, not some of it. I was going to say some of it. No, all of the crap and all of the great stuff that I'm involved in uh, is my fault. <laughs> Isn't that funny? There's no one else. There's no one else out there. No, it's crazy. You know, people walk around and you know they 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 have this great little victory thing and oh look what I did, look what I did, it's great, everything worked out perfectly for them and yeah, you know, as soon as something goes goes south on them, they're like oh so and so caused this and so and so caused that and so and so caused the other, you know. And, and again, I, I've I've heard so many stories about you know well I had a you know a partner this and and uh, destroyed everything and blah 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 and said fine we'll go rebuild it. And, I, you know, stuff like that all the time. It's always the blame, always the throwing the blame off, you know? And That's right. But, hey, Kate, you and I can chew the fat ad infinitum. <laughs> um, and we've lost Tony again. <laughs> oh, he's still there. He's just he's just a quiet puppy. I'm just nope. juggling. I'm, I'm trying to ask for some uh, some links. Where can people get your books from? Oh, okay. I'll put them through the book of... The book of... Okay. Jesus is secret wife, yeah, and I'll send up. you. I'll send you. I'll I'll send you the Amazon link. Yeah, just text it. That's fine. I'll put it. I was going to say, uh, throw it into my Skype. I'll pass it to Tony, or throw it into Tony's Skype. One or the other, and and that's okay. it. It it's done. <laughs> I'll get it right now. You keep talking, you guys. Okay. Uh, well, like I said, we have a couple of callers. I know Jim's there. Um, and I know Jim's going to want to say something, so you get first dibs, Jim. I'm just going to open up two other lines here, just so we have things in order, so people know that they're loved equally. Fair? Sure. <laughs> there you are. Okay, uh, area code. And, and as soon as I get these lines open, then uh, then I, I definitely want to get your comments. Uh, area code two one six. Your mic is hot. Do you have any questions or comments? Uh, yes, this is a caller uh, from Cleveland, Ohio. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Just I, I just need you to hold on for a sec. I've got one other line to open up. I just want to make sure that you are wanting to be in the call. So just one sec, and then we got Jim, then you, then uh, the next caller here. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I was to you pretty much. Sorry to cut you off, but I wanted to know if I would be able to talk to you, you know, offline, you know, just one on one. Because I know you face anytime, Canada. anytime. Because yeah, I like to have your personal number. You know, I travel to Canada quite a bit, but I want to talk to you and. Santos one on one, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the yeah, easiest okay. way, yeah, the easiest okay. way to get me is on Skype. Okay. You talk, uh, uh, well, uh, check this out. I'm, I'm pretty old fashioned, so I'd rather just talk to you directly. You know. Yeah, I'm, 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 you know, pretty familiar with not totally familiar with the Skype thing. I have it, but I'd rather just talk to people on the telephone. Well, that's that's what I mean. That is my phone. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, that is oh, okay. So you don't yeah. have a. Uh, Okay. 
Yeah, through Skype. Okay, well, how about I give you my number or whatever? Could I text it to you somehow or just... Yeah, well, just, uh, uh, just hold on, and I'm going to figure this out here. Uh, how are we going to do this? <laughs> Good or one. Or you have somebody I can talk to, you know, while I'm on the phone, just get the phone. Uh, not really, because I'm running the board here. Um, oh. I'll tell you what, uh, just give me a sec, and I'm just going to check the area code 760. And, oh, what's your name, by the way? Tim. Tim, and it's, that's the 216 number. Yeah, okay, so Tim? Yeah. Because so I, j- j- I got lines going here, so I just want to make sure I, I get everybody. I don't want to, uh, you know, call somebody out the you know, wrong name. Uh, area code 760, are you there? I am here, uh, Kate of Gaia. I, this is Carol, and you Hi. called, hey, you, um, I'm new to you, and I'm in love with you, and <laughs> I, I have my own conference calls. They're almost nine years old, and, uh, what light workers. And what you are all about is absolutely astounding. You are in everybody's face, waking people up, and these, what did you call it, a letter of hu- to humanity? I, yeah, I, I missed the title of it. Uh, I also am having popcorn, which is very annoying, especially when I'm hosting a call, but uh, I think the powers that be are doing that to us, along with the frequencies that are coming in. But you... My dear sweet friend are absolutely over the top amazing. You are brilliant, you are brave, and I love you and I admire you. And it's a long, cold, hard walk that we have been uh, that we signed up for. And oftentimes we don't hear the good stuff. And I just because we hear the bad stuff, you know, people are real quick to accuse and, and criticize. But I want you to know you have a new follower down here in California, out in the desert, that is very much in admiration of you and what you're all about, you and Tony both. And I got to hear Dean Clifford the other day, and, of course, that was the day that was peppered with a lot of language that I know. (laughs) And and, and in the last few years, my sailor language has gotten even more (laughs) strong. But uh, it's nice to meet a a brother-sister in the light, honey, and God bless you for who you are and what you do. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to chat, and I uh, I did I called the other day and left a message for you. I hope you got yes, it. Yes, you did. I I got it, and I will uh, uh, go forth with it and uh, be happy to uh, talk to you about uh, uh, a date in the future, possibly. Anytime, you know, I'm here to serve, and that's that's kind of where I'm at, and that's where I live, and that's what makes me float my boat, sink my anchor. Well, it's oh, while she's obvious. still here. While she's yeah. still here, I'd like to say hi to my old friend, Carol. Oh, my God. Who who might this be? This is Jim from out in Missouri, and it's been about a year and a half since we've talked. Jim in Missouri. You you still have my phone number, I do hope, Jim. I'm, I'm sure I probably do. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll have to look around for it, but I'm sure I probably still have your number. Okay, my dear, I'll be glad to talk to you. For right now, I'm How are sorry. You? I, uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm alive. <laughs> it's been a challenge. I've almost died about eight or nine times, and Cynthia's brought me back each time. So my, my mission, I, I refuse to go. <laughs> uh, I think you were meant to be here. Well, I think oh. we all are. We all are masters, and we're here for a time such as this. We all agreed to be here to to usher this golden age in as best we could. So God bless you, and I'll look forward to hearing from you, dear one. Well, uh, yeah, your your number is a 760 number? Yes, sir, it is. Mm-hmm. Still got it. I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Wonderful. all right. Oh, thank you, uh, Kate of Gaia, for letting us connect. <laughs> Oh, that's, and, that's 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 the universe. I'm the son and daughter. Remember? Yeah, shining, you are shining, shining the light on the dots. That's how. Well, it works. I'll I'll turn loose of you so you can visit with this beautiful man and and others that want to connect with you and and lift you up. You need to be lifted up daily, and I hope the people that are listening will take heed to that and and be kind to you for who you are and what you're doing. And you're kind of like Obama, as far as I can see. You're in the people's <laughs> face saying, "Hey, wake up! This is what they've been doing to you all these freaking years." I'm Obama. <laughs> oh, exactly. Um, in so many ways, you see. Every and that's the joy of, uh, well, kind of frustration too. In every good there is evil, and in every evil there is good. Can you have the eyes to see both? And yeah. uh, just uh, Tim, uh, for you, um, yeah. I will get. I have yeah. a. I, I have a cell number I can give you. I'll give. I don't want anyone to give their number out. I've given this out a number of times on the air. Uh, it oh. doesn't bother me. 
Yeah, yeah, listen, uh, Gaia, okay, yeah. If, yeah. if Jim will call me, I'll give him the number that you left me. Oh, yeah, no problem. Oh. Uh, well, we got Jim and Tim. I was talking to Tim just before you, and Jim oh, was I'm one. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Jim was one you were talking to, and um, definitely uh, Jim's in my Skype contacts, and I can I can refer the number over to him. Okay, uh, hold on, because I definitely want to talk to you and Santos. I'm, I've been in this information since I've been 17. I'm an ex-Catholic altar boy. Uh, I'm pretty much, I speak the same language, you know. All right. and I'm well, here, well, here. With the, okay, have you, go ahead. Have you got a, have you got a pen handy? Yeah, go ahead. And this is for everyone, but please, I, I have very limited minutes every month. This is an emergency phone only, and it's microwave cell phone. I don't like baking my skull, so here it is. Uh, okay. uh, area code 226. Two, uh, 226. Two, two, 971. 971. 9675. 9, and you're, you're in Canada, right? Yeah, that's what they call this geographical area. I just call it Gaia, but that works. <laughs> uh, okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay, what's the best time to contact you? I definitely want to talk to you and Tony Santos just one-on-one. Yeah, well, uh, what, uh, what, what time zone are you in? Uh, we're the same as Canada. We're the same. Our time oh. is the same. zone is the same. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you, you broke up there. What was that again? It's the same as Canada. But you're Canada. This is Canada. Uh, I'm running out of Canada now. I'm not, not California, I think. Oh, yeah, you're three hours behind me. I'm in Eastern, you're in Pacific. Okay, so I'm... Oh. It, yeah, it's uh, ten minute, almost ten minutes to eight p.m. here. So it's what ten minutes to five where you are? No, or six. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Oh, so you're uh, you're in the Eastern time zone. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But this is Canada, so we're on the same time zone, Eastern, of course. So okay. Best time to contact you will be when, Kate. Oh, um, generally I'm I'm around for about uh, 18 to 20 hours a day. So typically the best time to get me is uh, any time uh, you <laughs> you need to call. So it's okay, I don't I, okay. I, I don't ru- I don't let the clock rule me. The only thing that rules me is I have to be on air at seven to nine, according to I, the Victorian. I, 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 I'll, leave, I'll leave you this note from what I know from the ancient wisdom: time and space is for the phenomenal world, the spiritual world. It doesn't matter. Well, you answered your own question for me, because whatever. You know what? You're going to call exactly when you're supposed to. That's how I work. Yeah, you got it. You got it. It's all I'm you know. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, wow, we got everybody in tonight. Excellent. This is great. And, Swan, are you still there? Okay. I'm still here. Right on, because you were going to pass out that Amazon information. I sent you through the link. Did you get it? Okay, I'm just cracking things open now. Already posted it. Okay, Tony's already all over it, like uh, <laughs> like a dirty shirt. Okay, love it. Okay, Tony's okay, done uh, it there. Uh, I want to and, get back with you. I'm gonna answer this call. Okay, I'll put your uh, I'll put your mic back on hold. Uh, thank you so much, Tim. I'll, I'll open it up in a little bit if you have anything you want to say towards the end of the show. Okay. Oh, how long are you going on to? How much longer? Uh, we're on for another hour and ten minutes. Okay, good. Okay, I'll talk to you. I'm to talk to you, man. Keep okay. up. Okay. No all worries. Right. Uh, I'll put your I'll put your mic on hold and I'll check back with you towards the end of the show if you have any final comments you want to make. Okay, that's good. I, right. I do that anyway. All right. Yep. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, where are we going from here, guys? It is well, open. Kate. From. Kate, I just wanted yep. to tell you thanks for the essay. It was awesome. Totally yeah, awesome. A bit of a wake up call, eh? I've written a few like that, eh? I, I like it. I, I like it. I mean, I, I think it just, you know, kind of hits them right between the eyes. I mean, here it is. So. You know, you're here. everyone is here to save themselves. You're not going to save anyone. And that was the hardest lesson for me. It was like that, that was probably one of the biggest epiphanies I ever had. It was about, and it was about three years ago now. I went through a two, literally a two-week absolute depression, realizing that not everyone is going to graduate. <laughs> But that's not that's not my choice. That you know, we all choose our games, and you know that. And it's so hard for me to take the emotion out of it, but I learned to. And uh, yeah, again, the only thing that I'm here to talk about is be willing to look in your own mirror to see what your game is. And you know, if you can't see it, then obviously you have sipped from the the cup of forgetfulness really, really deeply, and that's okay. Hey Kate. Yeah. 
I don't know if you heard, but have you heard about uh, uh, James McBride getting interviewed? Yeah, uh, something about 2020 on Friday on ABC. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be interested to see how they how they treat treat the interview because it's uh, uh, is it is it gonna be live on Friday? Uh, is- apparent. Well, th- that's the plan now. Whether or not uh, 2020 decides to change it, we you know who knows. Yeah, well, you know, you know, that's the thing about mainstream media because sometimes they'll say it's live and it's you know it's already been recorded, it's pre-edit, right? So uh, I, I'm just gonna be curious to see what's out of that. Yeah, it's, uh, someone else, uh, um, uh, Gary tagged me with that earlier today. He thought it was rather interesting as well. Again, you know, as just, as things unfold, I mean, the illusion is coming down, the apocalypse has been lifted, and it's getting lifted more and more each day. And I'm doing I'm doing my damnedest just to you know to <laughs> take a chainsaw to it. You know, and that's all I want people to do is is you, you, the only way you're going to solve anything is to look within. You cannot find the answers out in the illusion. That is the quagmire. That is that is the the realm of the principality that rules this place. You will get lots of clues, and that's all you'll get. You will not get one answer. The answers you will always find within. That's well, it. you know, um, I went to the uh, uh, Divine Province website and I watched the uncut versions of it and everything, and. Uh, it was really kind of it was really interesting to watch him interact with these people because they were just so totally didn't understand. <laughs> well, again, you, you, you're dealing with you know I, I think I've got at least three or four paragraphs of that essay dedicated to those people that are doing the interviewing. They are so asleep and they're so you know they've got their thirty pieces of silver and they think that's what it's all about. Uh, and you know, hey, I was there once. It's the only reason I, you know, that's the only reason I can see the reflections I do because I was there, you know. It's, you know, there's no self righteousness here. There's none. There, there can't be in a neutral judgment of self when you are scathing. And, and see, here's the advantage that I've had over most people this lifetime. I spent a lifetime trying to convince myself that there was something desperately wrong with me, that I was some sort of freak, that I was this, that, and the other. And I did all the research. You wouldn't believe the research I did, trying to prove that somehow the, my my nature of being because it didn't fit in societal norms that there was something desperately wrong with me until one day a couple of years ago uh, I go back to uh, something that Mary and shortly thereafter within a day or so uh, in the uh, Emerald Liberation Front uh, the Elf Papers uh, there was a, a line in it that said everything that you think is wrong with you is exactly what's right with you and that was when I kind of came to terms with it and it was like I can't prove it. I can't, and I tried. I tried, and I think that's one of the things that that allowed me to step, not only live on the other side of the the, the looking glass, but to be able to step and look at uh, both sides of the equation equally, and you know, um, and not pick sides. Uh, see where they where they they meet, because everything, regardless of hot or cold, meets somewhere. You know, there's just degrees of separation involved here in the game for me was to see what those degrees of separation were and to take my own responsibility of where I was, where I chose to be on that scale, you know, uh, you know the love-to-hate scale. It's not fear, guys. You need to lose that, all right? Yeah. Fear is, it has, got, it has got nothing in common with love. You have a, a love and a hate scale. Those are the diametrically opposed, if you will, but they're exactly the same, just you know, different degrees of the same thing. One is hotter and one is colder. And where are you going to be on that temperature scale? And that's what you have to do. Because you can find someone that is incredibly, incredibly evil. And then all of a sudden, they're going to be seen as better than somebody that's even more evil. So they, they're both good and evil at the same time. It depends on where on that scale you're looking at it from. And that's why you cannot judge another. You cannot. You can observe and look in your own mirror to see where you fit in that scale and the two questions I ask are the ones that, that made it the clearest for me, and I always re- re- resort to these two questions. Is that something I would do, or is that something I would not do? And that's it. There's my, there's my, there's my thermometer right there, and it's so easy. No disagreements here. No, we got we're Carol. Still alive. Yeah, we're still live. Carol, uh, Swan, Tony, anybody? 
Yeah, we're here. I want Carol to contact me or me to contact Carol, please. Okay, I can, uh, uh, Carol, I can pass uh, the number across to, uh, to Swan as well for, uh, for you. I would, I would love it. Thank you very much. God bless you both. <laughs> no problem. You too. You too. I wanted to share something, Kate, that I'm jumping up and down about. Um, I love that you said you're a citizen of Gaia. And some years ago when I was given three months to live and I'd been in Belgium and I had to get away from a bunch of raging lunatics and I was at death's door, I landed in England in my car on Christmas Eve with a two-year-old child in the car and I had no English car insurance and no English road tax. So I got arrested on Christmas Eve with a two-year-old child and they said they were going to put my child in care for two weeks because I couldn't get bail till after Christmas. And he'd never been away from me, and I was still nursing him. So, of course, I freaked out. And they said, how can you drive around without insurance and road tax? And I said, my insurance with, is with God, and I am a citizen of the world. It doesn't matter where I am. I'm protected. <laughs> and they, that's when they arrested me. Yeah, well, I can I can understand that uh, when you're dealing with jarheads, yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> That's going to be something that definitely, that's that really high degree that they're nowhere even close to seeing. They can't even see the middle of where they're at. You know? no. But it's true. <laughs> you know, you're hitting them, hitting them between the eyes with truth. And that's, uh, I've done that a few times. Well, every time I've ever interacted with them, I like hitting them between the eyes with very peaceful, loving truth. And I get a lot of, uh, you know, boo moments. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, again, that's why I tell people, uh, Anytime they're interacting with any of these uh, armed jarheads uh, that are, you know, you got to remember the ones that are cruising around in, in patrol cars that are pulling people over, the traffic guys, uh, you know, even the cops will tell you they're the lowest form um, <laughs> in the ranks. So uh, they're there for a reason. Absolutely, absolutely. Do we still have Tony? Because we asked to hear from him at the beginning when I first joined, and I haven't heard from him yet. How are you, Tony? Tell us what's happening with you. I'm, uh, yeah, not too bad. I'm just trying to get through all of the different bits and pieces that need doing. Um, spoke to a couple of people today about joining the team at Synchronicity, so that's all some very good uh, information. Kate knows about that. So, uh, yeah, we've got some inter interesting people coming in. Um, just trying to, try to, trying to get it done as fast as we can, but, um, you know, that's, that's sort of like where we're at with it. But, um, yeah, it's all good. It's coming together. It's coming together, guys. It's time. It's time. You know, um, in <laughs> terms of the moon, which is, of course, tends to get ignored, but is what's guiding us and <laughs> what we're aligning to. Next month is the most powerful moon. It's the moon in ancient, ancient Christic, not Christian, but Christic terms as well as Buddhic terms, when... Christ and Buddha come down as close to earth as they ever come for the full moon in May, the West Act full moon in Taurus. And that's when we have the biggest opening of the dimensions that enables us to expand our consciousness and send out our waves of love and light and truth. Green light, green, yeah, green light, green light, green light. What is the date of the full moon? Um, I've been so busy with my book launch, I have no idea. Maybe someone can tell us who's online. I'll look it up. Hang on. <laughs> I... while, she's doing that, while she's doing that, Kate, could you please spell synchronicity as it shows on your Internet site? Because it took me to a different site when I tried to put it in. Okay. Uh, S-Y-N-C-R-E. N I C R E. Okay. Yeah, C R E N I C I T Y. dot com. Uh, okay. N I C Y. N I C N I uh, Nicity. N I C I T Y. Synchronicity. Okay. I know it's fun. That's why I have to spell <laughs> and that's it. Dot, out. <laughs> that's dot net, isn't it? Dot com. Oh, it is dot com. Okay. That, that's why we uh, made that spelling to get the dot com. Okay, very good, yeah, because it kept taking me somewhere else. Okay, thank you. Back oh, no worries. Mary. <laughs> All good. All good. And we're getting the word out. So, And, Jim, feel free to jump in here. Uh, Swan, please. I'm just looking up. Give me a moment. I'm looking up these moon times. 
Uh, as far as I know, I had a quick glance at something, but I believe at 2200 uh, hours, 18 minutes, uh, Central Standard Time tonight, we enter Taurus Moon. So, uh, wow. Well, so whenever the next full moon is, that's the day, guys. There you go. Well, here, let me, I can, I can slip around. Oh, better yet, tell you what, <laughs> I'm going to see if I can, <laughs> I can talk Mary into coming on here, if she's about. <laughs> right on. Yeah, yeah, let's see, Mary, yeah. Good yeah. idea. Or if we can get Santo, another caller in, area code 250, it's a party, so come on board. Uh, area, area code 250, you showed up, so you get to talk. <laughs> you there? Hello? I can hear you, I think. Maybe they're just calling in to listen. Area code 250? Oh, they just called in and hung up. There you go. I do that to people. I scare people, I think. It's a phone call. Come on, jump in. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can track... Uh, uh, still there... Um, oh, here we go. Uh, I'm supposed to ask, Carol, what you're so excited about. What I'm so excited about? Well, I'm glad that I found you. You know, Tracy facilitated that for me, and uh, she's turning on to a few of the very strong people in our phone family, and I'll be off here in about another 25 minutes to get ready for my call tonight. I have calls on Wednesdays and Thursday nights, so I can stay with you until about 5.30 Pacific time. But, Excellent. yeah, I'm excited about the fact that we are very close, I think. And um, are do you know about Nasara? Does that ring a bell with you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, very, very. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you oh do good. Think, of course. Well, <laughs> I've, I've been involved with Nasara since 98, and I've been God has really been good to me to uh, introduce me to quite a few white knights personally and so i had a very high one on my call two years ago three years ago now it was uh 2010 and there those calls are archived out of germany so um i'll i'll let you know about it when i call you because i don't know what you like to have put out on your call but <clears throat> you know uh, a lot of people say well i can't read anything about nasara so i don't believe it's real it's a scam well, they just don't understand the process. You know, if you're sitting across the uh, table from a, a chess player, a fellow chess player, there is no way you're going to give any eye indicators or body language or anything to let your opponent know what your next move is. And that is why we will not know what they're doing behind the scenes. Practically everything that's on the Internet is disinformation by the dark, and so... You know, we are very, very close right now, and we're being ushered into the golden age, for goodness sake. It's something that hasn't happened in 26,500 years. And so everything is changing. Our frequencies are changing. Our, you know, we're all uptight, and, and we question this and question that, and life isn't as it was, you know, years ago. Oh, oh you broke up a little bit there, and uh, while I have you, um, on, on our shows, because this is a show for the everyone... Uh, you can talk about no. whatever you can talk about whatever you want. <laughs> oh, bless your yeah, heart! No, you know? no. <laughs> Fix that's Carol out. Cutting Carol out. Yeah, I know. That's, that's <laughs> why I'm saying you you can say whatever you want, honey. This is this is our game. Uh, no holes barred. Uh, bring it on, bitch. That's how I play. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Kate. Oh my God, you're you're wonderful, and you are so needed at this time in history, my dear sweet friend. And I hope that people start resonating with who you are and what you're about because this is a beautiful thing. I've got chills right now just connecting well, with you. Oh, well, you, thank you. Just sent them up my body, too. Thanks. Appreciate that. I'm standing outside. I'm cold enough as it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's all good. It, it, it's the, it's the goosebumps that will get you every time. <laughs> Here's it's, the more goosebumps for you. The, full, the new moon so is a solar, full solar eclipse on May the 9th. And the full moon is the lunar eclipse on May the 25th. But, so, the we're up for a roller coaster month. But the 25th will already be in mm, already be in Gemini, so we need the moon before that, don't we? The 25th is coming up pretty prominent in a lot of things I'm hearing about. And um, I, I think that might be 
I don't know, you know, it's anybody's guess because I don't have any inside information other than my heart space and my intuition after, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm not in contact with the white knights at this point. I've just been groomed by them and, you know, uh, instructed by them over the years since 98. And I think that maybe there might be some disclosure process going on with the galactics uh, around the 25th of May. What do you guys think? Well, that was actually, Carol, that was the reason why I asked the question was because it was either today or yesterday, somebody somebody told me something in an email or over the phone that nothing was going to happen until after the 25th of May. And that that just kind of stuck into my head. And when she said that, I, that I wanted to know the date. <laughs> So I'm hearing stuff, too, on that date. Well, I'm not sure that we have to wait for uh, financial relief uh, until then, honey, but I I do think that uh, that might be a pivotal date as far as the overall picture. But I'm hoping that some financial um, benefits will arrive before that time. I mean, we've just got to stop the bleeding. There are so many people hurting and I, I, I'm an empath like all of you. I think we all suffer when we hear about the cruelty that they're per- perpetrating upon humanity and the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom and the chemtrails. And the, oh my God, it goes on and on and on. You know, it's got to stop. Just. I couldn't, I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> no, the, bleeding, the bleeding has to stop. Uh, and you see, I, I, I'm a trigger type individual where I get triggered by certain things, and there's something else that I want to share with you guys tonight. Um, and I shared it with you, I think today, uh, or it might have been last night. Uh, I share so much stuff, I never know when and who and where. I just keep, oh, send it out, right? Just send it out and keep doing that. That's what I do. It's a little piece I wrote a while back called uh, this one. This one is uh, is going out to everyone that 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 will, that will resonate with this because you know who you are. Again, this is I asked who are you. Well, there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to hear this and they're going to know it's them. And here it is. It's called Prometheus Blood. I actually put it to music, but I'll I'll just speak it until I uh, get up the gall to uh, perform it. <laughs> I'll record it or something. Anyway, here it goes. Prometheus Blood. Last night I died a thousand deaths, each by a thousand cuts. And though I want to leave this path, continue on I must. How much more can my soul endure this walk that steals my breath, where all around me pick away this slow Promethean death? This place of heart so quickly drains, reserves this gilded cage, entombed within the solace fair, cries out with neutral rage. That once I'm fallen on broken knees, do the carrion gather high, where crows that cackle in the fray, in silence, I will cry. Forgive them gently with mother's love. Dig deep, yet deeper still. Where those that fed from this weary child do feed upon my will. Where dare I stood in truth's profound, the blind eyes made to see. This mortal flesh rots on their limbs, these walking dead in me. Cannot they see beyond this veil, beyond their surely bounds? These fools that conflict searches out still chains them to the ground. I'm free, they yell from towers high, but know themselves not yet. They only see the flesh they're not, while caught in illusion's net. So toil I must, and stand I will, to bleed another day, where somehow through this misty plain I can help them find their way. To middle earth, where ebb meets flow, the balance of the tides, to climb Olympus' craggy face, where Prometheus resides. Since, for his gifts of fire's truth, the ascension of the mind, wrought from his flesh his liver torn, where morrow's day does find, his quest ordeal renews again, sacrificial daily bread, is where I share these selfsame truths in the way Prometheus bled. Wow. I didn't have a chance to read that one last night when you sent it to me, but that is absolutely sublime. Well, it's kind of I said to you earlier. That's why I like, I like talking with you because there's not very there's not very, very many people that I can uh, speak metaphorically or in prose and 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 it's like the one line I said to you, you know, and the walls of Jericho fell. Um, you, you see, when you say in conversation, you know exactly what 
the, the metaphor is and exactly why it's so profound. And that's, thank you for that. It's always a treat. Thank you. Thank you. That is just divine truth. But it's part of the movement we're moving into, the sacred world renaissance, where we actually express truth through love and beauty. And that's what you are doing absolutely exquisitely and perfectly. Well, um, I do what I do, and that's kind of where I stand. So, um, And I know there are so many of us. There are so many more now. I mean, I look back, uh, even over the last year or two, uh, and, and all of those in the, in the fray. I don't call it a fight. It's not a fight. <laughs> it's a fray. It's uh, all those that are, that are in the fray that have tossed in everything, and, and you know, so many people, the list goes on and on. Uh, for them, I am grateful, and I'm humbly, I hate even using the word uh, proud, but I'm humbly proud to be uh, able, you know, <laughs> to, to even think about counting myself in those numbers. Um, and it's only because I keep getting told that. So thank you for, for that, for everyone that does does say that. There is uh, one profound thing within me, and if you'd have asked me five years ago if I'd be doing what I'm doing right now, uh, in the present uh, me form, finally found myself, uh, I'd look at you and call you crazy. Um, a lot of things that, and I know everyone here in the call and uh, many, many listening, uh, and I mean, some of the things that, that I've experienced uh, over the last number of years, and I'm talking on a very ethereal level, uh, had anyone ever come up to me and told me about those be calling up somebody to get them you know, locked up. <laughs> But these are things we walk through. These are things that we get to see. Some things that wake us up. Um, and no one is ready to awaken until they're ready to awaken. There's nothing that anyone can say or do about it but you. Back to you. Isn't that funny, that, eh? You know, um, Kate, somebody asked me the other day as I was kind of explaining you and, and your show to them and everything, and they made this offhanded comment. <clears throat> and um, they said, well, isn't isn't it true? We've always heard that it, people that use foul language don't have the capability of using language in its uh, elevated form. I said, no, that isn't so. And I just want you to know, my dear friend, that your letters to humanity tonight <clears throat> at the beginning of your show was absolutely pure, unadulterated truth of the fact that you have a tremendous command of the English language. You are absolutely literate to the nth degree and there is no reason to for anybody to ever say again that anybody that uses foul language uh, doesn't have a command of the English language. You are proof positive that that is not a truth. So folks, get rid of that. And, you know, we on our calls oftentimes will throw in a few uh, colorful words just, to, you know, just to get the attention. To, to Because we have a lot of people in the process of coming out of that little tiny box that they've uh -huh. programmed us into. And so I... I have to be very careful to address people that are in that space that are trying to break through and then the people that are highly elevated light workers. And so it's kind of a balancing act for me. You know, it's not one or the other. It's kind of both. And <clears throat> so once in a while we will on our calls do that too, and I'm sure that some of the people in that tiny box are turned off by it. But it starts to open up their heart and their eyes, I do think. And, and with you addressing the peace officers ha <laughs> ha uh, the word peace is a is a <laughs> misnomer if you will yeah oxymoron but, yeah <laughs> yeah but if you uh continue folks to plant a seed and that's how i kind of look at it is i'm able to plant a seed you know i'm 72 years old now and my mother was an indigo as i am we're freedom fighters you know we're fighters for freedom she was a very early indigo but she was in California, in Orange County, and she was very knowledgeable. She was involved in, in the newspaper industry for a period of time, and she was put in some pretty powerful places. And she, from the time I was a little girl, educated me about the dark agenda. And so I've grown up with this stuff all these many years. And as I sit here in my uh, reverie, if you will, and trying to do what I was led to be here for, um, I think back of the little things that she introduced me to, like the fact that, Carol, we were standing outside the kitchen one day, out one night, looking at the beautiful sky, at the stars and the planets, and I was about 10, I think, 
And she says, honey, if you think that God in all his abilities and wisdom just put people on one little planet called Earth, she says, I want you to think about that. She says, I think there are beings uh, like we uh, are on, uh, like us, are on other other starships or planets or whatever. She planted that seed and it came back to my consciousness many, year, many, many years later. So as you plant a seed, know that it is planted well and someone else will come along and nurture it and water it and care for it. So don't hesitate to spread your seeds. That's all I gotta say. Oh uh, yeah, and it's, it's funny you mention that regarding uh, the colorful ad- adjectives we like to use. And, and granted, I get a car- I get carried away some nights, and and uh, yeah, we, <laughs> I talk to Tony about that, and it's like you know, you know, I get passionate, you know, PMSing, whatever the case may be. But here, here's the thing, and it's a beautiful point, very uh, extremely valid point you bring up, and it's something that uh, <clears throat> I used to tell people, uh, you know, if they would ever say something, I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you deal. As soon as you can command the English language, as soon as you understand what it's really about and what, you know, <laughs> in, in a very literate sort of way in, in conveying concepts and what have you, as soon as you fully, I'm an English major here, okay? As soon as soon as you get that, now you can abuse it if you want because you've earned the right. And, and unfortunately, so many people uh, don't elevate themselves beyond that. And me, I, you know, I... Yeah, I, I get carried away. There's no question. Um, and there's a lot of nights I'll come off the air and go, "Oh my God," you know. But the thing is, I, I'm I'm going to be blatantly honest. You're going to know exactly what I'm thinking, exactly what I'm feeling, exactly when I'm feeling it, and that is all I can do. Call me the the Gemini. It does not matter. Uh, mutable. I will throw it in your face. And if you can handle it, great. Because you know, I, the thing with me is, anytime any of that stuff is going out. There is no malice behind it. It's completely just what it is. Here, it's just a word. Well, you and know, God... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm no, no, sorry. no. That's that's great. No, I'll, oh, you know me. I'll talk all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking, you know, as, as you were expressing yourself here, you know, um, God gave us anger. You know, everybody says, oh, well, you shouldn't get angry. You know, that's not a, that's not a good trait. That's BS. God gave us anger. It's an emotion. And we need to exercise it when we need to exercise it. It's like a cooking with a pressure cooker. You know, that little regulator on top, if it doesn't blow some steam once in a while, that whole thing will blow up. And that's true of all of us. I don't care how controlled you think you are. There are times when you just want to explode. And, you know, the F word is a real good uh, pressure cooker release for me. You know, it's, it's real <laughs> expressive as far as I'm concerned. And... Um, <laughs> Years ago, back in the 60s in Orange County when I was a young mother, you know, I I was explosive and everything. I'd holler every now and then. And I was talking to my next-door neighbor, and I said to her, I said, Louise, I said, I sure hope uh, I don't holler and and offend you or bother you in any way. And she says, oh, Carol, go right ahead and, and, and do what you do. She says, I slam doors. And she says, I was so mad one day. She says, I slammed one of my cupboard doors, and it bounced back and hurt me real bad in my forehead. So she says, you just go ahead and do what you do. So we can self-destruct, too, if we're not careful. (laughs) Choose your poison, everybody. Choose your poison. (laughs) I've broken toes many times expressing my anger. (laughs) Uh, Well, you you know, but, Carol, you're you're exactly right. I mean, um, you know, I I come from a – my father's the same way, and I am too. But I'll I'll hold things back. And then it gets so bad that just one little thing, um, and I'll just explode. And I've learned that that's not the way to do it because once you get to that point, that boiling point, um, you know, you can do some pretty stupid things. So from time to time, you, you better let it go. Oh, exactly. Well, you know- the, the the dark agenda has programmed us in that way. Uh, back in the 60s, after I got married and had my children, <clears throat> I started noticing how the dark agenda was was uh, operating. The, the um, unions would uh, they they they'd have a three year contract, and the steel workers and the iron workers and the and the um, long uh, longshore people and the teachers they would all renegotiate their contracts at different times. So they keep everybody in a stew all the time. The politicians, the attorneys would write, hello? 
uh-huh. with the, they, they, they'd have a three-year contract, and the steel workers and the iron workers and the... And the um, oh, uh, Sarah? I, yes, yes. I just brought Sarah into the call. Uh, if you could actually drop the the show you're listening to, because we're about ten, eight to ten yeah. seconds out of sync. And okay. uh, yeah, any, anyone that's on Skype, what I generally ask is uh, mute out if you've got speakers, because uh, it picks up everything. And is that better? Yeah, that's great. So uh, I just we'll let Carol finish off, and then uh, we're going to get you to you know everyone's got a tuppence tonight, so please bring all your tuppences to the table. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Go ahead, Carol. Well, I just was uh, wanting to share that you know the, the when the lawyers got involved in politics, they started really mucking up the the works, and that's why the Thirteenth Amendment in the United States is so very important. Uh, they should not be holding office, but what they do is they they uh, uh, muck up the propositions. If you notice, when you have an election, there'll be propositions, and they'll and the pundits will say, "Oh well, it's only one fourth of one percent, and it's going to be strung out over twenty years." Well, okay, so we we pass that, and it's just one fourth of one percent, but. After 20 years is over, how many people are still living in that community if they haven't died or moved away that go back and check the records to see if they've stopped taking that one-fourth of one percent out? And they do. The the dark agenda works in tiny, tiny increments. And going back to what the gentleman said, that he he lets everything build up until it's ready to explode, that's how we have all been programmed. Oh, well, it's so small, I shouldn't make an issue of it, so I just let it go. And that just adds another to the pile, and then eventually some little tiny thing will happen, and we do explode. We all do it. So don't feel like the Lone Ranger. But the thing is, we are now being faced with all the garbage and all the stuff that these dark ones have been doing to us over the years, but now it's being put in our face big time. It's not being done in little tiny increments. Everybody can see it. People are losing their homes. They're losing their work. They're losing everything. And now they know what the dark agenda is about. If you don't think that this is a pre-programmed policy that they have, get on your computer and go to 1892 Bankers Manifesto. If you haven't read that, you need to read that. Back in 1892, they had programmed kicking people out of their houses eventually, So if they're out living in the streets, they can't be a force to be dealt with. They can't vote. They can't do this. They can't do that. So you have to know that these dark ones, have they're very patient. They take their time to just program us little by little. It's like cooking a frog. If you put a frog in cold water and just turn the heat up a little bit, eventually he'll be cooked, but he doesn't know it. And I'm done. I've got to run, and I love you guys. I'm so happy that Tracy introduced me to you. God bless all of you. And good luck... uh, Black Swan with your beautiful book uh, release. It's going to be awesome. Carol, thank you so much. And again, I have your number. I'll pass it over. Uh, I already gave it to Swan, and uh, we'll get you hooked up with uh, whoever you need to be hooked up with. Promise. Oh, thank you. And I'll be on tomorrow night again until this same time, and then I'll, uh, the other days I'll be with you every week, every day. I love you guys. God bless you. And thank you very much for letting me be part of you. Oh, thank you. Love, love in the mirror, baby. Love in the mirror, and uh, have a great, have, have a great show. Thank you, dear. God, God bless. bless you. God thank bless you God. too. Okay, honey. God bless you. Bye bye. Good right. hearing you, Carol. <laughs> I, I totally agree with Carol. I yeah. know where Carol's coming from. I mean, I'm. Carol's I've been, awesome. I'm, 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 I'm an empath as well, Kate. I totally feel the energy out there, and I can tell you right now that. Uh, the energy is um, pretty much, uh, shall we say, straight on what to, to what Carol was saying. Uh, they want you not to feel. They don't want you to act out on your feelings. They want you to be feelingless, uh, no passion, no expression. Uh, so many of us out there are, are told, if you feel something, then, you know, that's your own problem. Go ahead and take care of it yourself, you know, if it's bothering you in some way. But personally to me, if the energy is out there and the energy is not one of a compassionate, loving nature, then whoever's putting the energy out there that is uh, less than, than loving and, and, uh, and uh, supportive needs to check themselves because it shouldn't because we are beings of love and we are beings of feeling and we should be passionately expressing ourselves at all times, at all moments. 
Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, and that'll be in my own defense as well. Anyway, <laughs> no, that's that's exactly it. You know, uh, when you, when you when you look, especially you know, boys, not you know, you're not supposed to cry, and you know, and all the rest of this crap. Uh, and there was another beautiful war I had to fight within. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, okay. Uh, sorry, not one of those, but uh, you know. Anyway, um, we'll go from there more of a brainwashing technique yep. too. They're all just trying to dumb us down in every way possible. If not from from our emotions, you know, even on the spiritual level they're dumbing us down. You know, everywhere you look, the educational level, on every in every everything you look at, they're dumbing us down as much as they can as possible and lying to us. You don't know what's the truth anymore. You have to completely let go of everything around you and uh, deprogram yourself from all the uh, the lies that they fed us from the beginning, the time we were born. May I jump in here? Please. I agree with you. This is all happening. And, you know, the mirror, mirror on the wall is the key to it. I've been through unadulterated hell myself for years. And I know it shifts every time I get a new wave of consciousness about what I have participated in, willingly or unwillingly, or being coerced into participating in, in past lives. And when we get that it is all of us, we are one, they are us and we are them, we have been them and they have been us, and we're just doing this dance, then it shifts. So... You're right, all of you, you're all right that this is all happening. However, we don't shift it by focusing on what they're doing to us because there are no victims and no perpetrators. We are all just co-creating this dance together. And we change our own dance steps, then they have to match our dance or leave the dance floor. Yes, exactly. And uh, what was it, um, who was the previous caller talking about the uh, healing that is going on, the karmic healing that's going on? Because they're right on, and that's exactly the same message that I received from Gaia. Being an empath, I, I do feel the energy that this beautiful being that we reside on is, is uh, expressing. And she is, you know, so adamant about healing the karmic past that has uh, occurred upon her and it's still happening at the moment. And, you know, it's the only way we're going to ascend if we go ahead and take all these beings who have resided upon her and take the time to heal everyone, including those who hurt us. You know, everybody needs healing. From, from, the, from, the, from the babies to, to the elderly, uh, male, female, any species, every molecule, every atom, every cell is what sh is being expressed from her into my heart. Everything has to be healed in order to ascend. Absolutely. Um, I mean, uh, we, we can use the cliches that goes without saying, but it really it needs to be said. And uh, you know, here, here was the magic in finding out my real role here. This was the joy that came through uh, the noble savage cultures, in that uh, the two spirit. <laughs> we are the protectors of Gaia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, I, I got mom's back, big time. <laughs> How it works. We have we have another caller. I just want to see if um, if want to come into the call or if they're just listening. Uh, you know me. Hey, everybody. Uh, that's Aquarius. So it's all about. Code two one six. Uh, your mic is hot. Do you have questions or comments, or are you just listen? Area code two one six. Caller. I just unmuted your mic. I guess you're just listening, so we'll leave it at that. I'll mute you back up. There we go. Okay, um, absolutely. This is this is about taking the responsibility. You know, it's uh, looking around. You know, even right now, here we are, just coming into spring, and from where I'm standing, look, looking over over a fence into a grassy area, the amount of litter. So I think I know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. Uh, is it, it, astounding. You know, the snow the snow's gone, and it's just like people. It, nilly, they just throw whatever they want anywhere, and <laughs> You know, again, we're, there's a fenced area, so the wind collects it all here. But uh, it's disgusting to see the, I call the horror of Babylon, uh, you know, bits and pieces that just get, you know, thrown aside and and, and disgusting. Sorry, just that's just how I roll, you know. <laughs> well, I can hear the birds. I don't know if it's coming from your place, Kate, but yeah, somebody's yeah. got them. 
Yeah, the birds, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I was thinking about that a few minutes ago because the birds are sound like crazy here, and it's already like dusk well dark, so it's uh, there's there's something in the air tonight. There's definitely something in the air. Go ahead, guys. It's a party. Talk. <laughs> you know, I, I, I do want to mention something about um, Zeta Rictilii. I'm not very familiar with this particular type of being, but I do feel that in the recent days, this this being's energy is uh, very dominant and the one uh, needing the most healing at the moment. Um, and, uh, I, you know, just, uh, I guess I'm, I, I don't even know where to start with that, but... Um, a lot of manipulation and mind control comes from this particular kind of being. I, I don't know how much everyone knows about this, but um, maybe if somebody wants to share what they know. Tony, actually, Tony might be the better one um, if he if he's on the mic. I'm not sure or not, but uh, yeah, I'm familiar with Zeta Reticuli. Absolutely. Um, yes. Uh, go ahead, Tony. Um, what was the question? Sorry. Oh. Oh, it looks like I'm getting hit well, here. They blocked, they blocked that one. We rest our case. Yeah, yeah. They just they just slapped my Skype there. Can you hear me now, um, <laughs> Tony? Yeah, you're breaking in and out. What was the question? Uh, about the uh, Zeta reticuli. Yeah. What was the question about them? Uh, Sarah, uh, if you could again, it's, uh, it's just uh, an overview. Right, Sarah. Oh, I you know, I'm typing, so uh, obviously a mic isn't working somewhere. <laughs> Not liking this. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. And I got your uh, link, Swan. Thank you so much. And uh, well, we'll definitely chat after this anyway. Uh, for sure, I, I'd like to catch up one-on-one, -on -one, a couple of things with you as well. So, uh, uh, Sarah, are you... Yeah, we can do that after yeah. the call. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm just not sure if we still have Sarah or not. No, we lost Sarah. And, yeah, we got got you, so I'm going to... Where, where did she go? No, she's still showing online, so I'm going to try to bring her back in again. Uh, my my Skype got hit, so my, that might have dropped her off. So I'm just calling her back, her back in. Mm. Hello? Hello, and we just lost Swan there, too. Uh, yeah, we lost you. I, uh, my Skype got Hello? hit. Hello? Yeah, yeah, you're on. You're you're there, Sarah. I can't hear anything. Tony, Tony, talk. Hello. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Oh. Can you hear me? No, it's they're they're hacking a snot at him here, but uh, they just they're trying to dump Sarah again. Yeah, I got well, flat dumped about I got flat dumped about ten minutes ago. Yes, I know. I I managed to see that and bring you back in. Okay, Juan, back in again. Oh, we lost Sarah again. <laughs> they are not liking this shit tonight. I love them. Oh, they don't like this stuff. No, I do not like this. Okay, Swan, are you there? I'm waiting for Sarah. Hi. And Sarah, are you yeah. there? Yeah, I'm there. Okay, they're not liking this conversation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not. Sarah just got hit again. <laughs> Oh yeah, call dropped with Sarah. So uh, we'll give it a second. Uh, let things realign here. Okay. Sure. I was going to say you can talk in. It's breaking up, Tony. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was going to say type in the question. Uh, Sarah, it looks like you already put. put yeah, we lost her again. Um, can you hear me? Okay. I can. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'll carry on here. Everything looks okay on the board, so it's stable. Anyway, Sarah, what Sarah wrote was this. Let me share the personality of the Zeta Reticuli. They are manipulators of the mind. They know how to control the mind of individuals and all on this earth. Media is... Uh, let me tell you what uh, the Hathor shared with me yesterday. They were expressing that the sound waves we pick up via the tones in our ears are inorganic to control us. This is uh, for uh, a form of mind control to brainwash us and keep us dumbed down, uh, uh, too. Oh, obviously, yes. Uh, the Hathors, uh, though, are the beings who are responsible for the organic tones, which are used in the higher dimensions. The Zeta Reticuli are very clever, so clever, and understand technology very well, and require it because they are unable un to access the organic technology within all of them. Uh, it's called the Merkaba and the census, all 360 of them. 
They also sound so human, yet lack compassion. They imitate human emotions, yet an empath will be able to tell if they are genuine or an imposter. The lack of compassion and passion in the, is the biggest clue. Yeah, absolutely. That one I do know, and I've met, met many <laughs> empty souls, as I call them. Uh, just because they sound clever does not mean they love you. Uh, they do not know love. They lack emotion. And it's all a game to them who is going to win. And we have been manipulated to move away from our heart and be more like them. Uh, we are being a feeling and lo- being a feeling of love, yet as of now we have been infused uh, with... Oh, I don't know if that was me or not. No, Sarah again. Uh, we've been infused with uh, the Zeta Reticuli DNA ray, and it's now time to balance all DNA ray, cosmic ray. So, And she can't hear anyone on her end. So I, we'll just try to keep getting her back in, and uh, there you go. Yeah, they're not liking what she has to share tonight. <laughs> they're not liking what any of us are having to share, so there you go. Yeah, I pretty much go along with that. Um, that has been the case of manipulation. Um, there's also psychic um, vampirism going on as well. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's part of the issue with uh, why you know, I tell people, unplug your TVs, get rid of the damn things. Those are the carrier waves I'm speaking of. You can't; They're inaudible. Right, and uh, it's only when you become aware of stuff like this that you can actually shield yourself from it. Uh, once you see the train on the tracks that you're standing on, you step off, and there are many of those train tracks. And and as soon as you bring them into your awareness, that's now you're you're walking in the mind over matter game, and it's just a matter of deciding that. Oh, Swan has to go. Um, yep, I can do that. No problem. Uh, Okay, uh, Swan, if you have to go, if you had any final comments, that would be great, hon. Yeah, yeah, my last one is, you know, they're using all frequencies, the wireless, mobile phones, internet, any any open channel of space communication is being infil- infiltrated and we are vulnerable to it whenever we're in any of these communication channels. And I'm out for the ant. That's all I can say on air for now. Watch out for the what? Ants. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. No worries. All right, um, and I'll catch up with you after the show. We're off uh, off the air in about 20 minutes or so. Okay, hun. Okay, okay. Yeah, talk then. Lots of love, everybody. Talk soon. Bye. Uh, love you. Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right, so another interesting, uh, interesting call tonight. <laughs> when aren't they, huh? Oh, man. So, uh, okay, I see 20... Tony, Jim, yeah, just uh, and, and uh, Car- Carol's still with us, or is she? No, I think she had to go to. She's got her own call coming up, I think. Yeah, no, she's still showing on the board here, so I don't know how that happened. Oh, okay. Well, I was so glad to hear that that two of you got hooked up. That that was totally awesome. Yeah, well, again, it's we're 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 in that time where the frequencies are are uh, the ones that we're ma- uh, manifesting are are. You know, superimposing on all the other garbage that was that was placed there. You know, uh, basically the shovels of truth are out, and they're pushing all the garbage aside. And yeah, the connections will be made. That's it. That's all what we pistons can. are firing. Yeah, all green light, green light, green light. All systems go. And uh, and I've said it many times. All we have to do is hold the light. That's it. And I have to thank Gary again. There's a beautiful line that his dad gave him with me um, last year. And it goes like this, fist fight, hold the light, or carry out the dead. Choose. <laughs> you're either going to be the belligerent, or you're going to be the peaceful balance of the middle, or you're going to be a zombie carrying out the dead. You know, Render under Caesar that which is Caesar's. And I did want to get into the name thing tonight, but uh, uh, you know, fundamentally, it's, I'm going to say it, it's real simple. <laughs> if, you, if you have a name um, that you're using, that was given to you by your parents. Um, it was given away, guys. It was given as a gift. Uh, you might want to look up. You know, one of the legal dictionaries regarding gift. And yeah, absolutely. Um, our parents gave us all, and we do the same with our kids. You know, what's your given name? You know, it's like when the court says, "Well, give me your name." <laughs> no, it's mine. It sounds like this, though. <laughs> you know, uh, this is the kind of trickery we're dealing with, and it's at such a sublime level that most people are completely unaware of it. But I, I assure you, I, I assure you, <laughs> based on on my own experience, and this is why I do not carry ID of any kind whatsoever. The only thing I will carry is the bond that will that will 
make them commit fraud if they use it. It's called a birth certificate. Because it was the only go government document ever handed out. <laughs> and it was up to us to commit fraud with it. They said, you know, well, here you go. But, uh, you know, the given name uh, isn't yours. It was given away. Sorry, guys. I hate to tell you that. It was a, Your parents made a gift of it. We all did if we registered our children. And uh, once you come to that realization and awareness, it's like, you know, my girls, uh, no, uh, the deception is uh, is exposed. And no, 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 no. Fraud, uh, fraud revealed. Lose a name, okay. win the game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's clarify that because um, from what I from what I gather, the given name is your first name. Well, and you're if given, you have. Yeah, it's it's simpler than that. Your given name is the one that was given away. That's it. It's it. It was made a gift of for benefits. So there is no further claim to that name. Um, that and if you do, you're you're committing fraud. You're in contempt of court. You're a belligerent, and that's how they've been staying okay. on it the whole time. Okay. Well, okay. I just wanted to clarify because a lot of people, like myself, have been taught different. Because um, the last name, what they call the last name, is is a surname. It's not a given name. It's a surname. Oh no, absolutely. I, 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 I'm on the same page there, I and mean, we I, I expose that that you know, all went up to the crown and what have you, uh, and that was the first trap. Again, these are all layers that have been peeled off, and and then when it when it finally came down to it, it was it was very simply the fact that our parents aided and abetted us into committing fraud by using a document that was given to them by the government in exchange for the registration for benefits and then it was the mom and dad that was aiding and abetting in our own fraud by calling us that name that was given away and and then we perpetrate our own fraud against ourselves this is how they stand on it they don't have to do a damn thing we've been doing it to ourselves this has been my point you know and until people realize this until they realize that they're the ones that are I, that was my game I mean I do everything backwards here you know am I not clue enough <laughs> You know, uh, I wasn't looking for how the court was in dishonor. <laughs> that is a given. <laughs> it's how are they getting away with it in universal law? That's that that for me was was the real game. How are they getting away with it? Because we know they're being dishonorable pricks. They're stealing money. They're changing the laws at, at, you know, that they write at, at will. People say, well, they just change the rules. Of course they do because they write the fucking things. You dink. What makes you yeah. think they're not going to rewrite a rule that they already wrote? Really, it was, uh, it, it was a it was a typical response when uh, when James uh, um, McBride was being interviewed. Um, the um, reporter uh, asked him. He says, "Well, isn't what you're promoting and what you're describing uh, basically?" Um, well, I, he didn't he didn't use the exact word. It was part of the word, but um, anarchy. And James said, no, it's not anarchy. We still have rules. And they said, well, what do you mean, what rules? And he says, Nat natural rules, divine rules. Okay, well, oh, I, so you're, hey, Jim, Jim, I'm going to jump in here because I really don't want to get off on this tangent, okay, because I'm going to tell you oh, something right cool. now. The, the, oh, that's cool. If somebody, if somebody asks me about the word anarchy... I'm going to tell them what the word actually means, okay? Anu, heart, ark, the <laughs> ark of the covenant, okay? You know, the little ark, the spark, right? Key, life, okay? That's the X in uh, Greek, key. It, it also sounds like it's spelled C-H-I, which is chi, which is also Chinese for life, tai chi, okay? So anu, ark, key. You're talking <laughs> the heart, and the spark of life, the power of, of, of divine law, if you will, in life and the key. So, yeah, of course, I'm letting my heart rule me. So I would, I, see, this is why I'll never get interviews with these guys, because uh, I'll destroy them. And I won't even use potty mouth at all, I promise. I have a couple more callers. We've got 15 minutes left here. That's not to, to shut you down, Jim. I just want to get these guys You're in. Fine. And, uh, um, well, we did have, let me see, where are we here? Uh, area code 330, been holding for a few minutes. I'm going to open up your mic here. If you have any questions or comments, please, would love to hear from you. Area code 330. 
Questions or comments? Or are you just listening? Okay, they just hung up. <laughs> I guess they were just listening. I, guys, if you call in and I, I open your line up, don't run away. Please, <laughs> you know. Seriously, I, you know, it's like, what did I say something wrong? And, and it's just a phone call. You know, call in. This is this is your platform. I'm just pushing the buttons and yapping my gums off here. Um, okay, we got I, we, another area code two one six. Looks like a slightly different number. I'm going to open up your line. Don't run away. Please don't run away. <laughs> Area code 216. Your your mic is open. Do you have any questions or comments? Don't run away. <laughs> I can I can put you back on hold if you, uh, are you just listening? Yes, no. Okay, must just be listening. So we'll do that. We'll put that back on hold. Okay. My job on the board is done. So uh Jim, carry on. Sorry. Well, no, and and um you know, I I don't I don't know um um the history of words like you do, but but I just found it very interesting, you know that, um, you know as, as soon as James made that comment, you know it was directed off into religion, and he said no 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 I'm not a Christian, he says I'm not a part of any religious group, I'm spiritual, <laughs> and he says but no he says it's quite simple he says I'm not to do harm to anybody. That's yeah. a that's a that's a natural law. I mean, isn't that what we're expected? <laughs> and um, and then he said something else. But you know, it was so amazing to just sit there and watch these guys. Kind I know. Of they, wonder. Well, no, that, that's the thing, and that's another reason why I guarantee you they'll never they'll never throw me on an interview like that because I'll just look them square in the eyes. You guys can't be serious. You're not this dumb, are you? You're not this programmed. You're not this bought and paid for. Seriously? Seriously? You know, did you actually graduate kindergarten? Did you, did, were you able to tie your shoelaces by grade four? I mean, come on. It's like, you know, listen, if you want to try, and I'll tell people, it says, you want to play the circular trap with me to try to gear me into something? I'll play with you, and I'm going to make you look stupid. So have at her. Let's interview. Uh, you know? Oh, Mary's calling in, so I'm going to open up her line. Also, area code 216-99, first two numbers, opening your mic up as well. So if you have questions or comments, area code 216, first two numbers, 99, questions or comments. Hey, how you doing, Kate? This is Tim again. Oh, there you are again, yes. Okay, I want to read you something. I want to respect where I'm getting it from. This is this is the Egyptian, okay? So I'm gonna, since you're on the topic of words, okay, I'm going to read this to you. And uh, give, give me two seconds. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I just want to make sure I got Mary on the line here. Are you got, yeah. I, Great call. Oh. Yeah. Hey, I uh, just want to say great call last night. I had a chance to listen to the interview. You, Chris, and Cole did a stellar job. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, oh uh, I was going to hang on a sec, Tim. Uh, Mary, oh. your mic your mic level is really, really low. I can oh. barely hear you. Just squeaking. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Oh, I, I get it. Oh, there you are. There you are. The thing that are. I'm supposed to talk in was way up at the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need you close to it. Uh, okay, Tim was, I'm, li I'm listening to Tim. Okay. Okay, uh, Tim, go ahead and don't uh, just actually wh while we're at it, seeing as we've only got ten minutes here, I I just wanted to do thank yous now because we can roll past the hour. I just want to I always make like to make sure that I I get the gratitude out where gratitude belongs. Uh, and a great big thank you to Critical Mass Radio Online, criticalmassradio.co.uk. Uh, Paul, Lisa, and the crew there, you guys, uh, night after night, provided this platform for us uh, without question um, and without obligation. And uh, talk about on a wing and a prayer. And uh, you gave us a voice after the night before our voice had been silenced. So uh, upon you, a thousandfold blessings so much. Um, and anyone, guys... Uh, you know, Paul has provided this platform. Just so you know, this is this is about twelve hundred dollars a year that he that he has put up for us. If there's any way that you can pop by criticalmassradio.co.uk and and toss something in the kitty, uh, you're helping us. Absolutely, at Critical Mass Radio. So anything you can do there, uh, you're only helping yourself. So there you go. Thank you so much. And now, Tim, go ahead, my friend. 
Okay, I just want to read this. This is coming from African Egyptian knowledge, hermetics, if you want to call it. Uh, I'll just read you one last verse. We're on the topic of words. Strive to see with the inner eye, the heart. It sees the reality, not the subject to emotional or personal error. It sees the essence. Intuition, then, is the most important quality, quality to develop. Never forget, the words are not the reality. Only reality is reality. Picture symbols are the ideal. Words are confusion. That's just one part. And I'm reading that from uh, some of the ancient writings from some of the priests. That is exactly bang on. That is uh, that is more true than most people will, will, will resonate with right away. But I, I assure you that is pure hermeticism of the highest order. Love it. And that's why we need to talk offline. <laughs> But well, that's, I, I want to I want to be on the radio a lot with you two on the air, line, so you know I mean I'm I'm all, I'm all about humanity too. So. Well, that's why we're happy to have the platform because this is your platform. Like I I, I keep telling people, I I just sit here and I'm the mouthpiece that pushes buttons. Come on aboard, you know. Hey, okay. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Hey, I got a comment. Oh, can you hear I me? I got a comment, Tim, real quick. Yeah. Tim, there's nothing that you can tell or talk to Kate and Santo offline that you can't do online. Oh, oh, oh no, no. There, there's only certain reasons, and it's, it's no fear. It's no fear. Trust me. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you my age. I'm 42. I've been in this knowledge since I'm 17. I read all scholars, whether they're black, white, pink, yellow, whatever. I listen to them all. I'm a type of person. I don't really discriminate. Whether I like you or not, I'm listening to all sides, not both sides, all sides, okay? And that's where I come to my conclusion. But I always respect the origin of a lot of these writings, and I realize this through certain language when I'm hearing Santos Banaki talks, Kate. I mean, he's very knowledgeable, you know. I'm, I'm knowledgeable uh, about pretty much. And, uh, and to nip things in the bud, when we're putting this information, what I've discovered, just start learning history and whatnot, you know, college, whatever, what whatsoever, when you speak of this knowledge, uh, it needs to be replaced with someone, this is my opinion, with morals and values and ethics, okay? We know, I'm quite sure, Kate, you're familiar with the 42 laws of Ma'at, right? I know what you're speaking of, yes. Okay, you have 77 laws, okay? Now, here's the deal. This is where the confusion lies in. When you're not giving, it's like the whole thing with uh, Jesus. And, and it, it, yeah, I'm sorry, hey, believe it or not, you know, it, it's fictitious. He never existed, as far as what I know. Okay. Yeah, you can't yeah. offend you can't offend anybody on the panel, and you can't yeah. offend anyone listening, pal. We we open up every valve full. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, well, that's No, good. yeah, uh, you speak freely, my friend. Speak your heart yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and here's the deal. Uh, I had this talk, talk, uh, conversation with my cousin earlier. I was just my first cousin. He's into the knowledge big time. He gave me a book, The Christ Conspiracy, years ago. I said, man, we never knew this until we got on the cool. Okay, but here's the deal. I said, Terry, the problem with the Bible, many of these books, you got to go to the seed, okay? And the thing is, when you put these, these characters, these personalities into these symbols, these words, okay, these symbols, these words, these metaphors, you... You give them existence, okay? You, 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 they're literalized because of the morals, values, and ethics. Yes, I respect the Bible, but I find it a misleading book, whether it's the Torah, the Quran, or whatever. From what I know, when I went into the seed, I studied the ancient African Egyptian knowledge, period. I just say indigenous knowledge. But I say the seed is what brought me to reality. And when I discovered that, I discovered that. I freely try to put that out there, take it or leave it, you know. And, and, and I will tell you, a person who really brought me into the light, uh, many of the scholars, you know, the old scholars, I'm familiar with Schroeder, Schroeder, Schroeder Bits, Gerald Massey, all, of, all the big boys. I always wanted to know who was their teacher. Who was their teacher? That's the key to information. Who was granddaddy? Find out who granddaddy and grandma was. And you take it from there. Seek the root. But at the same time, the same time, we all have to realize it's all about humanity. It's all about everybody is to become Christ-like, God-like. We're part of we're part of a we're part we're part of the Creator. 
okay, to remove one of us that's not the creator. It's pantheism, you know. But uh, I can say so much. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I know. Just, I'm just letting you go, man. This is uh, this yeah, is good. It's all good. Yeah, and, and I love. I would love to get with you and Santos and Banaki because, trust me, it's like you become mentally lonely when you're in this knowledge, okay? The writings have taught me, the wisdom writings have, have brought me here, okay? Yep. And, um, you know, when I'm listening, I, I, I know the language. You know, when I hear you, when I hear you speak about law, I got friends that's Moors. They study black law. You know, I listen to them all. Black law, and that's what you're dealing with when you get into the etymology yeah. of words. Yeah. Yeah, the black magic book. Yes. Exactly. It's, it's it's all you know. When people say magic, no, it's science. It's science. It's intuitive yeah, science. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Again, you get magi, science. It's all the. Uh, again, it's just a manipulating of energy. Uh, that's what creation is. It's all energy and so. It, Mm-hmm. And, and, and one thing I would I, I think just for me for where I stand when I nip all my knowledge in the bud I think the key people to pay attention to as of today to put you into the now I faithfully pay attention to Graham Hancock, John A. West, Robert Bavall, uh, uh Dr. Maata Ashby. Now, if you want to know, and, and I will tell you how how you figure out people, you check uh, uh, a person who writes a book. Look at the bibliography. The bibliography tells it all. It tells it all. Dr. Yeah. Mahatma is a priest. He is a priest. Okay? These yeah. these guys, this information is the reality of everything. I mean, you would, you would I mean, it's, it's, it's just the essence of everything. When I got into the spirituality, I'm going to tell you how I got into it. I read this book, Secrets of the Exodus, okay? And... I want to know what the priest, and priest of priests is everybody on this planet. We are to become priests and priests. Understand, Christ-like, God-like, the yep. title. And their personalities, all these signs and symbols, these metaphors, was you. It's you. The, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the ancient indigenous people, the African people, the Comedians, or what, what, the Egyptians, so be it. Indigenous people, they had intuitive knowledge. This intuitive knowledge they put objects out here for us to understand the dark world. And pay attention. There's all sides of the word dark. Be caution on the word dark. Because dark. out of the darkness, there is light. Vice versa. Well, well again, I, I, I've made it very, very clear uh, to people that, uh, you know, just because something is dark doesn't make it evil. And you gotta exactly. exactly. You've got to be very mindful. Uh, one, one sec, Tim. I'll let you keep going here. Uh, we, just, oh, uh, we just ran uh, into the recording, so we're off the air. Just let That's more for uh, let Tony know that and everyone else. We can, we'll can we keep rolling for a little bit. But what I, I will say to you, Tim, uh, is um, you need to join us on the show for, you know, Oh, big time, big time. When I talk to you one on one, because uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I don't mind talking. You know, I can talk all day about this now. Yeah, but Tim, if you do it in private, then then I don't get to hear. No, oh, you're going to get it. <laughs> I just want to talk to the uh, Santos and Tony King and and, and Tony Dyke because I know you're trying to put a film together. I want to put into. I want to. I want to be a part of it. whether whether I ever meet you or not. I know you're in Canada. I listen. Trust me. Uh, pay attention, though, strictly. If you want to know about the essence of spirituality, Graham Hancock, Dr. Moata. Graham Hancock, Dr. Moata. Those are the key people that focus on the essence and the reality of everything. Okay, can I say one Graham thing? Hancock. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I want to say something because you said something yes. uh, um, a, a couple of minutes ago when you were talking, and, it, and you said, like, we need to get to the root of things, you know, and find our our grandparents and get to the seed of like, and that's in us. Like we all have that in us. So when you Mm -hmm. say, when you're like, you need to like follow these people. I honestly didn't know anyone whose name you said. I kind of know who Graham Hancock is, but I don't Mm -hmm. watch any of those people or read Mm -hmm. any of their books or anything like that. And I think I'm doing really awesome. And I think it's because of what you said first. Not because you all, remember this, it's all intuitive. We just forgot. Okay, period. Mm-hmm. That's what the writer said. It's all here, simple. It's well, all hey, Tim, here, Tim let, let me jump in and make it a bit easier for, oh. for everyone. Here, here's the joy of the connectivity that I love to speak of all the time. It matters not that if you're in direct contact with one individual or not. What has happened, though, is, you know, myself, I know a lot about Graham Hancock. He's awesome. Uh, and we've talked, Mary, and that that energy is shared regardless if you've been watching him oh, or not. Totally. No, I kind of you know? yeah. know who it is, but, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, doesn't matter when I hear anyone saying, like, follow this person, it's just like, really? Well, Graham, Han <laughs> Graham Hancock is part of my experience. So, so is everyone I've ever come into contact with. So uh, regardless if you're talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, I've already interfaced with that individual. Uh, Tim has, uh, to Tony has, Sanfai's, we all, you know. And now so, we have. Hey. And now you have as well, because that's, that's the, the, you know, the seven levels of separation? There isn't seven levels. There is no <laughs> separation. That's no, it's it's beautiful. That's it. It's, it's, it's all it's all symbolism. Everything behind this, you know, where the, these objects are basically illusion, optical illusion. Yeah, sigils. And and and, and, and Kate, you know, like, the reason why I say, you know, I, I kind of, I, I always look at the elders, and whenever I got this information, I want to know who did you get it from? 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 That, that was that's how I thought. That's how I think. You know, and I, and I yeah. realized, and I, the reason why I totally respect Graham Hancock because he's been all around this world. He's been de he's been diving. He's experienced. And here's yeah, the thing. Yeah. Here's another thing about information. Sometimes I kind of disagree with people when they talk about experience. It's uh, uh, information is about knowledge and experience. Okay, but here comes the experience. They say you actually have to be there to actually experience. I don't believe that. I won't. I won't accept that. I say. I can experience through your thoughts where you travel. I can experience through your thoughts through Graham Hancock, through his travels. You understand? Rather than yeah. being there. Well, Rather yeah, than I, being there. I wrap that up uh, very simply like this. What, you, what you're speaking of is wisdom. Now, that's when you put experience and knowledge together. And that's exactly. when you find the wisdom. Exactly. And whether I experience it or not, it doesn't matter because I've been through my things in life and all I'm trying to do is share that experience as real as mm -hmm. I possibly can so that people can find the wisdom in it in as much as I have. And that's all I'm doing. Uh, again, and mm -hmm. this is not, I don't talk about opinion. I only talk of experience with knowledge, share the wisdom. That's it. Exactly. And that's the part about being a master. You know, type of yourself or not, <laughs> information and nowhere of the truth, nowhere we all want to know, but it's you know depends well, on what. There's a well, I'm mm -hmm. begging uh, to ask Ryan and Harry. Yeah, Harry to You're totally cutting out. Uh, they might be zapping us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Can you hear me? I can. Kate's okay. totally cutting out over here. Okay, now that's better. Is that better? I can hear Tim, but Kate's... Yeah. Okay. Fuck, they're talking yeah. to yeah. Kate. Yeah. <laughs> Kate, I can barely hear you. We're losing the signal really, really, really badly. Um, there's virtually nothing of what you're saying is coming through. Okay, I can hear you. Okay, skip this can hit. Yeah. Skype attack, yeah. Skype attack. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. I, I okay. should be back. Yeah, I should be back now. I've been getting hit on and off for the last couple of minutes. But I'm uh, Mary. Uh, what do you think Tim's uh, zodiac is? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have to just blink right now. I'm just kind of uh, it's all good. Yeah, I have to. Uh, I, it's begging the question what? here. Uh, uh, what sign are you, Tim? Well, this this is something I want to talk to Santos about. The uh, Planisphere Dendera. That's what I want to talk to him about, and you know, I just want to give him more. I'm, I'm, if, if I give you, you a, if I if I give you a, a a Greek name, it will be Cancer. If I give you an Egyptian, it will be Kefra. Yeah, I can feel the passion, baby. Lots of feely feely in there. Love to know yeah. the ascendant. Sounds a bit like a Leo to me, but that's. Uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm Kefra, Cancer. Oh yeah, I know. I yeah, I'm just. Oh, um, if you're if you're in your cancer though, you definitely have stuff in you. Say it again. If you're if you're born in June, July, then there's a good chance that not only the sun was there, but maybe Mars or Venus, you know, or Mercury mm -hmm. well, for sure. One of them. I'm gonna give you an understanding of the uh, planet for Agenda, and I, I'm not disrespecting anybody. Uh, astronomy, I'm deep in astronomy. What I'm saying, all these zodiacs are still part of you. Okay, we gotta to me, it's, it's not one age. You were born at this time. You gotta remember, get out of time and space, part of the phenomenal world. Objects. 
okay? Each and everything in this universe, you got to think of your mind of being everywhere in this universe at the same time. The part of it. Okay? Now, I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it at there. I'm gonna leave it. At yeah, there. no, yeah, no problem. I, and I told, I totally agree. And that's one of the reasons why I always come back around to remind people that everything in the physical universe are clues, not answers. It, it, exactly. And sorry, uh, we got to come out of the the, the duality. We got to come into the non-duality. We thought, oh, you were born in this past. No, it's all part of you. Here, here. Uh, just a, a quick question. Is everyone hearing the same static that I'm hearing? Yeah, I'm hearing it. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's a really... I'm not sure which, oh, which line it is. Oh, uh, it, it's 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 going crazy over here. So here, just one sec. I'm just going to mute a couple of things and see uh, whose line it's on. Okay. Okay, it's, it's on Mary's line. Uh, Mary, if you can, I, I unmuted your mic again. Uh, there's there's some major major feedback. So I'll tell you what, hon, hang up and I'll pull you in the call with me and see if that makes. Okay, sense. okay, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just hang up and I'll pull you in with me. Okay. All right. Um, That's gonna, good. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Uh, pull uh, Mary into the call with me here, see if that's any better. There was just serious, serious, serious. Uh, <laughs> there she is. And, that's, uh, and hopefully it's uh, uh, going to be a little bit better pulling in with me here. There, that's mm-hmm. better. Uh, well, I know I'm talking, it's like, wow, because that was just, it was getting so, so heavy. Oh, yeah, there you are. Yeah, that, that's a little better. There's, uh, there's just, I guess, some... Um, what do you call it? Uh, interference on your end, but it sounds a lot better now. That's okay, at least good. tolerable. Now I can hear you and everything. It's great. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why I was on mute. But... No, no, no. No, it, it, there's something in the signal, so there's still something there. All right. It's not as bad now, so it's all right. Shields are up around you, baby. I got gotcha. you. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, a lot better. But, uh, yeah, as far as... Um, yeah, a lot of stuff you were saying, Tim, was getting uh, stepped on heavily by that interference. But um, again, I go back to everything in the physical universe. They're just clues, and, and the zodiac knowing thyself probably for me is the biggest clue in mm-hmm. what I need to do in this infinite time. Because uh, here we are in the physical reality where time illusion does exist, so we have to work with it and oh. uh, and to find that uh, you know beautiful zero point of no space, no time. I can visualize both. I ha- I've for a very long time been able to do that, um, but it's not. You just can't explain it. Mm-hmm. So I know what you're saying. Yeah. I do. <laughs> you you want me to read you something that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna uh, strike some thunder? <laughs> oh, please! Like I said, <laughs> free for all. Let's go. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, okay. Uh, knowing, okay, having information and having knowledge are not necessarily the same thing. Much in the world is information, we are told. Much information gathered by our senses, which which are made to gather information from the physical realm only. Since human senses are designed to perceive physical objects, they miss a whole other reality which lies beyond. The absolute truth or God, which underlies all things in the physical realm, cannot be sensed with the ordinary senses, which are designed only for the world of duality. The universe of male, female, yin, yang, up, down, come from the come from the real homog- homogeneity, grayness, timelessness, bottomlessness, boundlessness. All limitations of the physical realm came from the limit, lim- limitless realm of the spirit, which was made perfectly clear in the earliest cosmo- cosmogenical scriptures. Therefore, human senses which are created and exist in the physical universe will be um, useless, will be useless in perceiving the spirit. The change must be within the mind and heart of the individual. The individual must change into the spirit in order to see the spirit. That's it. Yeah, no, uh, sorry, I'm trying to unmute there. Um, absolutely. You know, uh, again, Within the Hermetic teachings and and what I what I have stayed with in terms of the limitless uh, spiritual, 
you know, we have we have the three planes that we exist on: the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. And mm -hmm. it is uh, at a point where the spiritual, in, in, in its fullest sense, is, is completely unknowable. While we are, you know, messing within the physical, uh, we can mm -hmm. we can get there. Uh, but the understanding of it, uh, that's where the ascension of the mind comes into place. That's where you rise above the physical, understand the limitations of physical, then you rise to the mental, which this is a mental universe, uh, mm -hmm. to get us back into the limitless spiritual aspects. And uh won't even begin to go there, but, you know, you have that inherent knowingness, and that's the, something you mentioned earlier. We all, we, we, we're not learning a damn thing here. We're, we're remembering. Exactly. Uh, we're, just, we're just forgetting. And the thing is, well... I'm speaking in, in like the same thing. Like I said, when I went to the seed, I realized the pyramid text is a ritual book. The Book of the Dead, the Book of Coming into the Light and Coming Day by Night. It's really the Book of the Dead Brain Masses, where mummies stay. We're coming out of a cocoon, a resurrection. Okay? And what you're speaking of, when I go to the seed, even when you talk, to the her talk about the hermetic, hermetic text, that I can say the origin, the essence of that word. You know how people say coming out of that box? That's, yeah. that, that, that's the story of Jehudi. Paul, terms. Jehudi, and I'm going to tell you from far as what I know, okay, it's a symbolic of our brains. Okay? It's a brain. That's all a mind. It's all a mind. It's all mental. When I read the Book of the Dead, and I understand it pretty much, they're talking about your brain, your heart, and your mind. Yeah, okay. as above, so yeah, below. Exactly. And I, yeah, and as within and without. Um, when you were speaking of those realms, okay, the realms, okay, you're, you're talking about the love. That comes from the pillar of the star. When you're talking about the physical realm, the astral realm, the casual realm, the final realm is nothing. It's void. That's the final realm, the path of immortality. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm speaking from a the book of the dead. Yeah, again, and this, <laughs> this for me is is pure hermetics. This is exactly. yeah, this, this is where it, oh, I I find myself speechless most of the times when I when I start getting into this because I, you know, I don't know how much I I can share at what level, uh, but again, it is that inherent knowingness that we all have, and all I'm trying to do is simplify it, um, you know, to what I've you know uncovered uh that whatever you can call it enlightenment you can call it epiphanies you can call it whatever you want you i i like to call it illuminati downward. right so they say illuminati that scares people <laughs> i know and 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 the whole uh, the whole idea is to be illuminated you know and yeah, exactly it's all sides to that story and people talk about yeah. illuminati and they, come on dude it's just mind power period okay well yeah. you can you can take either path a good path or a bad path okay but it's all complimentary but there still is a such thing as good and bad. People say, oh, well, you know, it's complimentary, but it's you have to use that to come out of the struggle of coming to the light. And when people say Illuminati, okay, if you want to take the bad light or the good light, that's your choice. Yeah, it is. It's, okay. it, it, it's a path. There's two paths we can take. And one of the things, uh, one of the warnings in the Hermetics is uh, those that choose to use the their knowledge um, of, of ascended master status or whatever the case might be, uh, if they want if they want to use it for evil intents, uh, they have a terrible fate in store wh where they will be taken down to the same degree that they abused that which was a gift to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, again, it, it's all about um, this is where self judgment comes in. No one can judge anyone else. Oh, yeah, Only oh, yeah. and, 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 and hold it off. Because so, sometimes I cut in on you, uh, Kate, because I'm, I want I want to lose my. That's train fine. Of you know, no, that's my, fine. No, it's okay, good. Uh, even 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 I can track things when you're talking. This whole thing about judgment comes from the neck of scene, the judgment scene. It's you. It's all you. Okay, it's all symbolic of you. Every individual on this planet. Okay, nothing predates it. Let me know if there's a book that predates the Book of the Dead. Let me know. Okay. It tells you in there when you when you see the hieroglyphics that you become your own judge. Okay. You are the fate of your own destiny. Okay. So I want to read this to you. This is from Egyptian proverb. There are two roads traveled by humankind. 
those who seek to live my art, and that's the 42 precepts, the 77 laws with the Dogon use, um, other Africans, and indigenous people, and those who seek to, to satisfy to satisfy the animal passion, that's the lower nature, the lower three chakras, whatever, so be it, you know. But that whole, if you if you look at the necklace scene, the judgment scene, it's really talking about you. And it's, and it's so funny, it's like, wow. Wow. They are actually showing, giving you symbolism. They're giving you visible things to understand the invisible. That's all it is. That's, that, that's all these idols stood for, to teach you about what you don't see. It's all intuitive. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't agree more. And I don't want to cut this short, but I'm going to have to. I'm getting hammered on this end. I got people chomping at the bit. Oh, okay. uh, oh no! Hey, listen. They can't get the archive until we until I stop rolling here, right? So I was like, hey, archive, archive. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. <laughs> But, uh, no, Tim, uh, yeah, definitely, uh, and if you want, you can give me a call on, on uh, my cell after this, uh, by okay, all means, cool. not a problem. I do have to talk to Swan, but I'm sure we won't be on the phone that long anyway, because I don't have that many minutes, promise. Okay. Uh, yes, but, uh, uh, you, you, oh, wait a minute, my updater just kicked in here. <laughs> I love a, I love a, a vast, but it, it, it is a very noisy program <laughs> when I'm talking. But, no, uh, anyway, I just, uh, Definitely, I want to get uh, get hooked up with uh, you, Tony, uh, me and Santo, and Mary, of course, if you want, Jim, oh, everybody, you know, uh, just to, time, just time. to have a have a chat, and uh, and you know that Santo is on uh, with us Friday, every Friday, and uh, uh, typically if Jordan Maxwell is available, he he uh, comes oh, in as well. You mean Granddaddy Jordan? Grand, yeah, I'm very Granddaddy I'm Jordan. Very familiar. Trust me, you can't yep. discriminate this information. Man. You have to listen to black scholars. Your everybody. Everybody, and that, that that's the name of the game. If, you, if you're so fixated just on the European side, you need to come out of that. Come into the African side, okay? Come, come on all sides. You yeah, well, that's it. I mean, the minute the minute you decide to choose one or the other, you've created duality and division it's within it. yourself, divide and conquer. Exactly. So, and, and, and it's not both sides; it's all sides. All see. sides. Listen, exactly. when I when I, when I'm at a party, everyone's there. That's it. <laughs> As That's how it works. I can see that in your chart. <laughs> yeah, isn't that true? I know it's funny. I was, I was looking at that the other day, and I went, "Yeah, okay, now I see it." Because I wasn't sure how the eleventh house thing worked, and I said, "Oh, I got, I got a mess of planets in there." Ooh. <laughs> well, another thing, have you, have you uh, seen the uh, spiritual molecule thing too? That's that stuff people might want to be on, you know, ayahuasca stuff. But it's, it's really many other uh, uh, plants, uh, hallucinogenics. Yeah, I got I got a little salvia here, so I uh, I haven't uh, haven't partaken in uh, quite a while, almost a year now. So um, it's time to go and uh, take a walk in the wild side. Might even do that tonight. Now, thanks. <laughs> well, DMT is in everything. So, but uh, yep. I will say I could say something with some of the writing when the when the priest and priestess because everybody wanted to be a priest and priestess, and that's a title for everybody to be Christ like and God like. They didn't put anything in their body. You got me. Nothing, not even a hallucinogenic. Absolutely, absolutely. Some things, some things like the ayahuasca can bring you to reality, but you got to understand all the indigenous people were connected. Whether the, the, even the Egyptians, they speak. Don't let us fool you with these pyramids. Just because you see some of these indigenous people, these people are, were true scientists. Okay, they can be anywhere on this planet, in this universe and see the same thing that the Egyptians were talking about. The Egyptians will tell you we are descendants of someone much more ancient. I hear you. Absolutely. Yeah, we definitely need to get into this uh, really deep, and especially with... Uh, Robert with Son- Duvall. Don't forget about Robert Duvall. He's a granddaddy, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, no, big time. All right, well, uh, I'm, I'm putting the word out there right now. Friday night, 7 to 9, it's uh, Syncretism, uh, two-hour show, so feel free to uh, come aboard. I know Santa wants to do some charts and stuff, and that'll be a, a beautiful uh, bit of information that we can all sit around and share. It's awesome. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So I'm going to wrap things up here so I can uh, get all these chompers off my butt, and uh, okay. they, they can get their broadcast. <laughs> It's okay. awesome. I, I love it. I mean, it's it's, it's beautiful. So same uh, here, same here, man. I'm glad to connect with some people that that want to stick with and see truth. Uh, we're gonna stick with it. We're gonna see it through. We've already won. That I know. 
There's there's no believing it anymore. I know that. So oh, on that, you know, we got to come out to believe, right? Knowing, yeah, that's a gnostic. <laughs> exactly. And on that on that most perfect happy note, uh, I, I want to say thanks to everybody for uh, uh, tuning in and uh, being tuned in, which is even better. And of course, everyone in the call. Uh, Swan, Carol, Mary, Tim, Jim, uh, of course, Tony, co-host. Yeah. Uh, and I know I've missed somebody. I have to have missed somebody, did I? Oh, and uh, uh, Sarah. Sarah called in and got bumped off there. So thanks to everybody uh, for tuning in and uh, taking part in another open forum here on the Critical Mass Radio. Outside the box, uh, your host, Kate of Guys, signing off. Don't forget, tomorrow night we have Leaving the Farm with Tammy Pepperman and Pat Chuley, where they expose the very, very ethereal side of law and taking it to a whole new level of get it done. Much love to everybody. Thank you guys so much. Take care. Hi. Oh, hey. Love you all. Hi, Safri. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Say good night. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Safri, say good, say good night to all the listeners. Oh, she, she stepped on something pointy. Do you want to say good night to all the listeners, Safri, on the whole radio? Okay, here. Perfect. Say good night to all the listeners, Safri. Good night. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> there you go. Oh. That was perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you, Safri. Much love to all you guys. Good night. Take care. Bye.